Hello, everyone. Uh, you're welcome to uh, Zeno Nation. Uh, this is a special edition. This is Femi Nation tonight. I'm joined by my regular co-host, Marcus Crawford, who's on location at an undisclosed location. And, uh, and we're joined by our special guest tonight, Brian Singleton from True Drone Reviews, who is going to tell us all about the Femi A3 that he recently reviewed on his channel. And I got breaking news. This morning I woke up and got an email from Banggood that the Femi A3 is now on sale for $229. Yes, I said wow. $229. So I'm going to throw it to my um, co-host Marcus Crawford to get his thoughts on the evening. Hey, everybody. Uh, have a good evening. Uh, I'm coming to you from Las Vegas today uh, in Las Vegas for a few days visiting family. So, uh, but the Femi A3, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't own one, but uh, but I obviously watch Brian reviews and I've seen other reviews and, and for two hundred twenty nine dollars uh, for a solid GPS drone like that. Uh, Sounds like a darn good deal to me, and I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, hearing what uh, Brian has to tell us about it. All right, Brian, how, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing wonderfully. Great, great. <laughs> how are you liking your new digs, Ron? Well, so far, so good. I mean, I, this was a kind of a vacation house, so it's not like a new house. It's just I'm living here full time now. Hey, I, I notice you don't have uh, you don't have your earbuds in tonight. I, I don't. I'm just. Because you know what? If we talk too long, they die on me. <laughs> yeah, oh, they don't. The battery don't last long. Well, that's, I, a, that's a my phone one, so isn't it? The wireless. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think I charge them right. Like if I don't have the little thing, they go in charge right. I mean, I don't understand the details, but if you talk for two hours with them, they tend to die. Is my experience, yeah. but uh, yeah. Well, how big can those batteries be if they, they fit in your ear? Exactly. So I mean, if you just listen to music, they probably last all day, but. I guess they don't work well as a two-way device, but okay, we're going to jump into it real fast. As Marcus has a uh, he has a date later on, uh, so he may not be with us for the whole show. But Brian, I will carry on when he has to leave. But okay, um, we're going to start at the beginning, Brian. I, I tell him this. Tell us the story about how you tried to order the Phoebe A3 back at the end of last year. Right, was at the end of September, wasn't it? When I ordered the. Uh... I pre-ordered the Femi A3 and the Xeno the same day, on the same day, and they both made it. So, oh, any day it's shipping, you know, and so that never came to pass. And um, they wound up after the what was it, Ron? Forty days for Banggood. If you have a pre-order more than forty days, they automatically cancel, cancel the order, and you, they can't even stop it. It's built into their hardware, into their system that it's automatically canceled. They can't even go in there and change it. You know, even if you get a hold of somebody, they can't stop it from happening. So once it's into that 40 days, it automatically gets, so that order got kicked out. The Xeno order got kicked out. I was mad as a hornet. I was never going to buy these products. I was that mad. I even, I think I told you about it on one of your shows, you know, some live stream we were doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I eventually wound up getting the Xeno and then I wound up, finding this uh, and they and they shipped it out you know so yeah it, it is what it is you know they had a lot of problems getting this thing out to people believe me uh, I, that's what i want to mention the the, the Phoebe a3 is not a new product per se but it's a new product because out, outside of the, i don't know if you got lucky or your reviewer normal people haven't gotten their into their hands until recently right i mean it you know it had the the usual suspects got theirs you know, the RC Sailors and Dustin and all those jokers, you know, they all got theirs, but everybody else, nobody else got anything except for Kolsky. He got for some, I think people in Europe were able to get them before people in the United States. I think they were shipping over there um, quicker than they were shipping them over here because Kolsky's had his for a long time. You know? Right, right. And uh, the funny thing is it seemed like, you know, you thought the cheaper one would ship faster, but it seemed like, well, Marcus got the X8. The X8 came faster than right. the A3 right. generally. Right. Exactly. Well, the X8 uh, took, uh, I first ordered it in December, and I, I ended up getting it, uh, what, in mid-May or the end of May, something like that. So. Mm -hmm. Well, when I ordered the A3 a few weeks ago, I was going to get the uh, the other one, but it wasn't, 
you know, it said this one, they had so many left. You know, I think they said, actually, when I ordered this, they had two left in stock at Banglet. So I ordered it, but they didn't have any of the, uh, uh, the X8s in stock, or I would have bought that, you know. It was just an in-stock issue, so I bought this because it was it was there, you know. But I'm not disappointed in it. It's very nice, you know. It flies great. So I got no problem with that. I mean, we all saw your your review, and and you know, I, I wanted to link your review in the show notes. I didn't get a chance, but I did link your channel in there. So anybody that hasn't seen Brian's review of the A3, go to the link in the show notes, and and uh, it, it's not that many videos back. You won't have to scroll that far back to find it. Um, but uh, again, we, we all saw a review, and um, you know it was a pretty favorable review. I, 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 well, if I'm if I'm misquoting, stop me. But um, I, I know the the big thing was the screen, and, and that was important because a lot of people said to me the reason they wanted the A3 was because they didn't want to have to use their phone. That they they liked the idea of the built-in screen, and it seems like that may have been a well. That's the worst part of the whole deal. The screen's the worst part of it. I wish they would have just went with the phone. Okay, to be honest with you, because you know, even the the shittiest phone on the market has a better picture than this thing. So this Brian is terrible. It, that that's because it's hard to see a, and then b. Uh, I've heard people say that the menu is a little bit clumsy. Well, well, or it's not. It's hard to see. It's cheap. It's it's a very extremely low resolution. Like I said in, uh, I think when I was mentioning it, it looks like. Like one of them Android, $40 Android tablets that you would buy at Walgreens from 2007. You know, the screen is not, you know, high res where you have to turn it at a certain angle to get to be able to see it. You know, it's just one of those real cheapo, cheap, cheapo screens, you know. And the, like I said, it's the worst part of it because it actually flies really nice. You know, it flies excellent. But the screen's an issue, but you're going to have to either get a shade one of those shade things or stand under a tree yeah. once any light hits it it's over okay it's gone so forget it you're not seeing anything but in the house the screen looked decent yeah it looks fine in the house okay yeah. i'll turn it on here and see i'll put it up to the camera now. so like, that's I have it. to that's turn on the quadcopter for it to be able to show sure. anything you know hey while you're getting that on brown we already have a question <laughs> chat room uh, Mike Burman Cruz is asking whether it's, it's if it's five point eight. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's five point eight. And it takes a, it takes a little minute to warm up. Now I did the update on it yesterday. That, oh, okay. that update, and it's it's about a molecule easier than the Zeno update. Okay. <laughs> the, so worst, it's, the worst. The worst update. Yeah. Lino. The only thing you don't have to do is pinch those pins together. Okay? <laughs> Other than that, it's the same BS. Okay. It's the same crap. Now this thing has to do this preheating process and then it comes on. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So it's just ready to take off and you just press in this little button right here and then you'll see the screen. It it there. Okay. And then if you turn it on at any kind of angle, you're not seeing it. You okay. see it? Right. Yeah. Okay. You see, I think it's, I can see in the reflection there, it looks like it's going black or whatever. Yeah. You have to have it at this right angle. So if you're outside in the sun, you need a sunshade for this. I don't know. Maybe you could rig one up yourself and stick it in the antenna, you know, some kind of piece of cardboard. You could probably just wedge right in there, actually. And then tape it on the side of the transmitter. So, and that would probably work fine. We should invent one. Yeah. New business. Yeah, right. New right, business. Right, right. But, uh, you know, I flew it and it flew great. And I, I'll tell you what I was, what, what's the best thing about it is the camera. I was way past impressed with the, uh, the camera on it. Really? So, yeah. Really impressed. I see one, I was, I watched, uh, Kolsky's videos. And his videos, he even admitted after uh, um, on a later video that the video didn't come out the way he wanted it when he made because he was doing these comparisons between the Zeno and the A3, you know, these video comparisons. And it looked like the Zeno was just so heads and you know, way miles and miles above 
the A3 and the picture quality. And me and other people were making comments. And he said, yeah, it looks that way. He goes, but that's not so. He goes, that's just the way it came out today. He said, the A3, the video is way better than this. It's, it's just this is the way it came out today. So See, when I went and flew it, I noticed that it, the picture is very nice on that thing. Very good. Comparable to the Zeno? Comparable to the Zeno in the 1080. Okay. It's, of course, not – it doesn't have 4K. Right, right. Okay. You know, it's comparable to the Spark. I don't think it's as 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 clear. It's a little softer, the focus. Right. It's not as clear as the Spark, but the stabilization is really good on it. I was I was blown away actually from what I was expecting to see on the video. If you go watch my video, you'll see I put the video in video and you'll see it there and then I swell it back up. You don't see any jello or any of that kind of stuff, you know. Now the, I was expecting it to be nowhere close to that. Okay. Know? Now the key question is here, here's here's the million dollar question. Uh does it fly better than this than the Zeno? No, it doesn't fly any better. Okay. I don't think it flies better. It's more stable. No, but it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have any optical flow or anything on it. It has the barometer right. thing, just like the Zeno does, but it just seems more stable out of the box. Okay. You know, when I did that little flight last week with it, when I did that little mini review, I didn't. There was no updates. That was out of the box and take it up in the air. You know, so, but it it flew fine. I mean, I didn't go very far, which I never do on any new quadcopter like this when I get it because it, uh, I had that one fall out of the sky. So I never do that again. So, right. Yeah. You want to get some confidence in it first. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're, you, that was a great, uh, flight that you did there. And I saw that part where you were moving it back and forth to show, uh, the stability of the, uh, of the camera on it. And, uh, you, you just kind of brought something up. It's amazing to me, uh, that, that Femi is able to make that thing so stable without any kind of optical flow or any other sensors. And, and the Zeno is just bouncing Betty. It's, it's all over the sky when there's wind, if there's no wind, it's fine. As soon as a breeze comes up, it starts yeah. moving around. Yeah. Cause when I just put that, uh, you know, that damn video out the other day, which they'd already put another update up to the five, two. So I have to go make another video now with the five, two, but the five one, if you see the video just to, to watch the first couple minutes, you'll see when I take off, it goes eh, eh, yeah. like that. And I'm thinking, okay, I thought Ron said this was cured, but I guess it must be the next update that it's fixed. But it was real windy. If you notice, the trees were going all over the place. It was yeah. very windy. Well, what 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 what's telling Mark is it's it's never it's, ne it's never fixed with a strong wind. But yeah, no, anytime there's wind, the Zeno is going to be bouncing around. And, and, you know, uh, I, I really enjoy, like, watching Chris, the QC guy, watching his videos. But if you saw his latest, where he's flying it in amongst the trees, and, in fact, he even, I think, uh, shaved some leaves off some trees and stuff. I just, honestly, that's just not what the Zeno is, is for. It just isn't stable enough to do that kind of flying. And, and, and obviously, Chris was doing it for fun and to make a point, but... Uh, but yeah, I, it's, it's just not that kind of stuff. Well, I noticed with the Zeno of the, I think I've made what five videos with it. I've flown it more than that, but I don't make a video every time I fly, you know, I want to fly. I don't always make a video, Yeah. but, uh, that bobbing and all that crap, that all goes away once you get up and get going to me. Exactly. I don't even notice any of that. You know, once I get up there and start spinning around the park. I don't even get any whiff of this bobbing around. It's where I where I think it's supposed to be. It's not like dropping down when I'm up at – usually when I'm at that park like I was yesterday, I am at 200 feet. Okay, that park I usually go to. I stay at 200 feet there at that park because I'm living in a 300-feet zone. I can only fly up 300 feet. Yeah, it yeah. becomes a moot point then. Right. So yeah. I, I don't, <clears throat> I'm not going any higher than 200 just to be on the safe side. You know, I don't even want to take the chance. Right. So I just keep what I'm doing at 200 feet and be honest with you, 200 feet is far enough right. for flying around those trees and those parks. That's high enough for me. 
But um, I will say one thing about the A3 as far as if you were looking at a Spark or an A3, the Spark would have the advantage because you can use the phone, okay? The, that screen is going to be better than this screen. But the advantage to this thing, it's much easier to see than the Spark. You know, legally, we're only supposed to be flying line of sight. I mean, I think that's what the thing is. Correct. You know, these people flying five miles away. I know damn well they can't see that quadcopter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> when, when I'm flying in that park, the outskirts of that park, from where I stand, the outskirts of that park is like 750 feet. That's about as far as I can see one, one of these quadcopters. It's right. about 750 feet. Okay. The spark, I can't see that far away. I can't see the spark at 750 feet. I have no idea where. I can hear it, but I can't see it. Hey, hey Brian, is the, is the A3, is it the, basically the same size as the Xeno? Yeah. The, the, uh, I did that when I did the unboxing. The, the footprint of the A3 is the same as the Mavic Pro. Okay. That's the footprint. It's almost identical in size to the Mavic Pro. It's probably not a lot smaller than the XE. Yeah. Because when I did the video, when I did the unboxing video, I set it on top of the Mavic Pro. Hmm. And it completely covered it, like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's the footprint of it is a Mavic Pro. That so So to me, one of the strongest points that I see with that A3, quite frankly, is somebody that is looking that, that doesn't, have a lot of money, and they're looking for a good, stable uh, GPS drone with a solid, uh, stabilized camera on it that takes good quality video. Uh, to me, it, it looks like a home run, especially at two hundred twenty-nine bucks. Yeah, well, you know the thing about it is, no, it has the headless mode in there. That's in the options. Okay, the headless mode is in there. So you could put it in the headless mode and just go do some kind of range test. And all you got to do is go forward and pull back straight on the joystick. It'll come back. You don't, you know, you can lose sight of it as long as you have it in the headless mode and know which way you were going to start. You could just pull it back and it'll bring it back. Yeah. And it also has a lot of people. I noticed too, a lot of people that do these kind of things, they just go out as far as they can go and just hit the return home button. I right. noticed a lot of people pull that little maneuver too. Who, who I have would that never, be? What I have are you talking about? Hey, I have never hit the return to home button on any quadcopter I ever had. No, I've never hit. I've never hit it. Never. Not once on my Mavic Pro. Never once on my Anafi. Never once on my Femi. Any of them. Never. I've never Guilty as charged. Button. Never. Mark, never the return to home button's fading. <laughs> hey, I, I was going to throw in there too. Um, the the A3 is also popular with guys that have the uh, the the 5.8 gigahertz goggles. You yeah, can work with those goggles, so that can eliminate the problem of not being able to see the screen if you fly with the goggles. That's true, absolutely. So I guess I'm gonna have to wind up getting a set of them. <laughs> I mean, I got I got two goggles. I got the unique goggles and I got the uh, DJI goggles. But oh, John goggles, right? But the DJI goggles, I just use them for my PlayStation. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I use them for. Yeah, cool. My PS4. So I never use them the, for wow. the Mavic Pro. You know, so. So, so for for the Feeding A3, it's now for two hundred and twenty nine dollars. You could fully recommend it to. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just for the camera alone, you know, just for that. Right. Right. So you know, I think it's I think it's well worth the money, and it has those. You know, that do-it-yourself port there on the bottom that I guess eventually people are going to come out with stuff they can plug into that and, you know, guns or whatever the hell they got in mind to put in there. Like, yeah. Hey, uh, Ron, yeah. let me ask you. I did, uh, uh, man. Last oh. time we uh, well, last time we did this uh, uh, and we were talking to Brian, I, I ended up pushing the button on a new drone. Uh what do you think about this time? I know uh, before we started the show, Brian, Marcus and I both were getting our fingers near the buy button for $229. Yeah. Well, you know what? You can go back and watch that video I put up. Just look at the video. You know, the video, uh, the video is, I, like I told you, I was surprised because I was expecting to see 
what that Kolsky video looked like when I did my video, and it just totally looked different. But that was just a bad day, he said, for his A3 or something. I don't know, something about the shadows or something. I don't know what it was. It was something. Well, remember Kolsky, he had problems with his Zeno at first, and he kind of was not liking it. And then he right. said, I remember that. Now, now he put the Zeno in his top five quads. But he, yeah, but he got one of those super duper early ones too, because he was one of the people that got it right away. And his, with his, when he got his first one, or his, or, yeah, I think is, I believe he sent it back, and I think they, they sent him a new one. Uh, he was having horrible camera problems with it. Those color flashes, when he tried to put a video together, it was all, uh, you know, all those different color flashes and stuff. I mean, it was really bad. Well, I didn't have to send, I had the color flashes, but I didn't have to send mine back because I went to my tech help support, Marcus Crawford, and he told me what memory card to use, and I haven't had a color flash since. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yours is working awesome. That's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Well, that that's you know always a point that i make with that bird is how much they've improved uh the video on it you know i when i flew it the other day out at the snake river it's just impressive uh the video quality of this you know basically essentially it's a 250 dollar drone uh the xeno now you can you can buy it on ebay for 250 dollars all day do you think that's why he cut the price of 229 because they want to undercut the uh, xeno could be I wonder how this Zeno is sold for them. You think Hudson's made money on this thing? Uh, Chris, Chris told us last week. He said even with all its firmware problems, he said they sold a bucket load of them. Yeah. Well, I think it's well worth the money. But it wasn't a fur. I mean, at first, you know, it had a lot of issues. But I mean, wait until you do the new firm update, Brian. They put the speed controls in. I mean, it has precision landing. That's a gimme. They put speed controls in it. You can slow those speed controls. Essentially, it flies in sport mode all the time. That's why it flies a little crazy because you always are flying in sport mode. But you can dial the things down. You dial everything down to 50%. Man, I, I, I put them down to like 50%. I flew around this ball field like it was on a rope. I mean, it, it's just, you know, it's just slowly – perfectly turned on his on a tight yeah, see i did notice that when i was flying the xeno early especially the first time and the second how it would do that severe braking and all that stuff whenever right. you would slow down you couldn't slow down it would just like you were slamming the brakes on it would go like that yeah I, I hate that well you know the spark like the spark when you when you put spark in sport mode it sort of flies a little crazy too that'd be yeah. like well they you all do they all do have a mode, mode. And the, even the Anafi does that in the sport mode. Yeah. You know, they put those big brakes on, you know, so. Right. But wait until you wait until you dial down the speed settings and the Zeno, you know, that thing will fly again. Like it's on a line or whatever. I mean, you, it doesn't matter if you fly in the in a small backyard because, it, you know, if you dial it down slow enough, it's going to just fly again, almost like it's on a rope or rails. I would love to know the engineer at Hubson who came up with that idea of upgrading that damn controller with that putting them pins in? <laughs> yeah. That guy should be fired, or not? He shouldn't be fired. They should take him out in the back and just shoot him in the head, okay? And throw him in a ditch. Oh, that's the Christ. Who? Hey, dude, this is 2019, okay? This isn't 1973. Okay? Uh <laughs> this guy's the oldest programmer they have. He, he, this is the uh, he updated his PC in 1985. I must have watched that Chris's video on that. It, I must have skipped over that little part about 15 times. The part where he was putting the foil on there the and all that. Foil. I never could get that to work right. Well, the well foil. Chris is in the chat right now. So yeah, I, I what I had to wind up doing was pinching them together with the tweezers. Okay, and then I put the tweezers on there and with and did the little clip. He had uh, one of these little clips, you know, one of these little doodads. Yeah, holding the tweezers on the pins. I could not get it to work with the foil. I, I did it with an alligator clip. Uh, yeah, well, I got Brian. it to work with the clip. With an alligator clip, clip, and I absolutely those little pins are so bent up and mangled on. On my controller, it's, yeah, but, I, but they, I got it down. It worked. Yeah, well, you may you can probably only do that X amount of times before one of them is going to bend out or break. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It's going to bend out, and it's it, it 
you know, that's going to fatigue the metal. Yeah. Yeah. You're only going to get X amount of updates on that. And then it's going to yeah. wind up snapping. And so that's going to be the end of it. And then well, we'll, send them all to, uh, we'll send them all to the QC guy and he can solder them back. <laughs> can, <laughs> Chris, can you answer that? In the he can, open a, he can that? open a business. He can open a business, a, a Xeno controller soldering business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in demand. Huh. But yeah, yeah, that was nuts. And, and really, the, the only thing that it accomplished is it gave us that ability to change the radio channels. Right. Which, I don't know. I don't think that really, if, if somebody asked me today, if they need to do that update, I'd, I'd say, no, nah, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Well, I, I told you so. though. I don't know if I'll ever do another one. If this, if this updates as good as, as Ron saying, I don't know if I'll ever do another update on the controller again. I, I haven't updated my controller yet. It's just out of pure laziness. Right. But I did notice what, um, you know, I don't have like when, uh, when uh, Marcus and uh, you, Pollock, when when they put the sport mode button on, it says on the controller sport mode, even though it doesn't do anything yet. But mine doesn't because I didn't update the controller. So, well, let me tell you, Ron, if you have any issues with your vision, I'm telling you, updating that, getting those pins put together is not an easy thing. I had a hell of a time. I mean, believe me, I had a hell of a time even seeing in there. Because, you know, you got to pull the phone thing back and you're trying to look up in there and you're trying to, and the, I think there's four pins total, four or five. I'm four or five, something yeah. like that. And you're looking at the first two, but the first two start looking like the first three and you're like, believe me, it's, uh, it's gonna, not easy. Brian, I'm going to take your advice on a UPS mine to uh, Chris. Yeah, good move. <laughs> yeah, he's not far from here. He can, yeah, it's not far, Ron. <laughs> Not far from your house, believe me. When when Brian I when Brian says me those quads, he lots of times he says them on a Saturday. I get them on a Monday. That's how quick you can get something from Pittsburgh to basically well, Philadelphia. Well, I moved a little farther away. Maybe I I can't get that one day shipping time anymore. <laughs> but that's how that's how quick we can get stuff back and forth. Hey, you just you just made me think about something, Ron. Uh, and we're we're we just happen to have all three of us on here right now that, oh. that we're had the golden egg in our hand and and now bill the drone reviewer has it i i you know when he does his live shows i see it still sitting on the counter behind him there when is that thing going to move to a new home i keep wondering he won't give that golden egg up yeah he liked it too much evidently uh, maybe his wife plays with it it was in that pot at one a lot of good jokes there uh, Brian, but anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. I'm in Las Vegas, you know. Right. And you're drinking a Diet Coke. A cherry Diet Coke. A Diet Cherry Coke. Yeah. He, he went all out with that cherry. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. Well, get, uh, I guess what I have here, Brian, for you is going to be Stay put. Look, here it comes. Oh my goodness! Uh, 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 sh uh, shadow uh, GPS Shadow Drone Nation here. That's right. Brian, his most recent video, uh, he had to buy another one because he was getting so many questions about this model that he sent me um, that he got another one. But to answer your question, Brian, this does come with the FPV goggles. Yeah, I never messed with them. Well, guess what? I I, I haven't tried them yet either. Yeah. So I told that people in the video to get a hold of you if they had questions about the goggles, but uh, I've never had a question about the goggles. Well, the, the, I only, the goggles are pretty straightforward. You drop the phone in there, put it on your face. Right, right. It, it, they're just like, you know, the $10, uh, what do you call it, virtual reality. Uh, right. What you get at Walmart uh -huh. at Christmas time. Yeah, I don't uh, mess with those. That's uh, what I know. need to know, gin and tonic. <laughs> But uh, Marcus, uh, we may we may have to. Oh, Gorilla Man's in here. Oh, Gorilla Man's in. Yeah, he's in here. He's hey, coming. Gorilla, Gorilla there, Man. Yeah. Gorilla Man makes some great videos there. That guy. He's coming on the show sometime, right, Marcus? He won't come on. I tried. He said he he said he's afraid he would speak his mind too much. He's like, he like, like Brian doesn't, you know? <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah he's afraid he's speaking his mind, Brian. Yeah, well, he shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell him to come on. Well, I'll come on with him. We'll have a you know we'll have a four way. 
Chris wants to come over <laughs> on with him too. So that would be a party show. Yeah. 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 So uh, the with regard to the uh, with the Zeno, I think we beat that controller thing to death. And I'll be honest with you, I'd be shocked if we ever got another update for the controller. I'm sure we'll get more firmware updates. I think the main reason they updated that controller was just completely and entirely to do that update with the, with the wireless so you could uh, switch channels. So I can't, I doubt we'll see anything with that uh, again. Uh, but uh, boy, with this last update being able to change uh, the speed on that thing, it's just really like Ron, you said, it's just transformed that drone, particularly the yaw, being able to slow down that yaw. Man, that's just that just was phenomenal, uh, and then and then uh, do we dare talk about precision landing for a little bit? Yes. Uh, have you heard about the the Zeno getting the precision landing, Brian? Yes, I have. Something about the flying pad. You had to have the pad with the H on it or something. Well, Marcus has has another detail uh, about the the pad and more than the H. Go ahead, Marcus. Well, so you know, I messed around with it a bunch, and in fact, I put a video out about it, and I and. Well, the first time I tried it, I had the orange side up on the pad. Heck, it just wouldn't, it would never see it. I could never get it to do anything. So uh, the next time I went out, I flipped it over to the blue side. Well, it started to, to see the uh, pad in it. And if you look at uh, Chris, the QC guy, he, he did kind of the same thing. He did a bunch of landings in a row on it. And what's weird about it, it's, it's really not ready for prime time. Although, to be fair, Hubson calls it a beta. Uh, but as it comes down, you can watch the software, look for the target, and, and then it, it, it lights up. It turns green when it's found the target. And boy, you'll think it's just going to land perfectly. And then it'll get right above the landing pad. And then it'll move three feet to the left and it'll say, oh, lost the target. Okay. So now what you have to have the camera pointed down? Do it. You, 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 well, it, it will do that. It'll do that by itself. It'll but that camera it'll return to home. It only work in a return to home. Is that correct, Marcus? Uh, you know, I'm trying to remember. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I ever tried it in anything but return to home. So right. I can't, you, have, you have to use return to home. Yeah, I, I yeah. can't. Yeah, but it does. So it'll point the camera down. But to your point, you cannot be recording at the same time. You can't be recording video. And, and have that precision landing work. Okay. Anyway, long so it's story using short, the camera. It's using, it the, using camera, the camera. That's why yeah. it can't be recording. That's right. exactly right. Yeah, yeah that, right. of course, that's all that that drone has. It is right. that. that, that no, I think camera. those. Uh, I think that Mavic stuff does that with their their optical flow sensors, right? Yeah, their, their cameras on there. It, it, it actually it takes a picture when you take off with sensors and. Yeah. Right. Okay. The Mavic. The Mavic. When you take off, it, those down facing cameras it actually takes a picture of where you took off from and yeah. when it's coming back the algorithm <clears throat> tries to tries to match that that yeah. freaking mavic is phenomenal It'll yeah land on that's the called floor. that's called real technology that's real okay. technology yeah, right. yeah that's real technology yeah okay. <laughs> so so that really is the only point i'm going to make is that uh, on the xeno that precision landing it's fun to mess around with it's a gadget it's a toy don't count on it for precision landing. Oh, uh, I'm going to try it out. I'm going yeah. to check it out. Oh, you'll have fun. It's fun to mess around with. And, and, and Marcus, I, I bet you, I bet you in a couple generations, a couple more firmware updates, and they'll get it right. Yeah, yeah. that could very well be. Yeah, I, I bet you they'll get it working ninety percent of the time. Uh, you give them a couple uh, firmware updates. Yeah, but it's that ten percent that's the killer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 90% ain't good enough. It's got to land 100%. Hey, hey, Brian, how's the A3 in landing? Does it uh, does it land pretty close to the pad when it comes back? Or I never do to return to home. I mean, I mean, I can bring it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah, it lands fine. Takes off. It's all manual. You arm up the motors manually and take off manual. There's a setting in there, but you have to actually go into the menus and find all this crap and hit, okay, auto launch. Heck with that. Just start the motors and lift up on the stick. Fire. Uh, hey, guys, it is about time for me to take off. I am going to go uh, meet my sister at P.F. Chang's for dinner. So I'm going to leave wow. uh, leave the show in your both you guys' uh, 
capable hands. But uh, thanks for having me on tonight. <laughs> You're welcome, Marcus. Thanks for staying as long as you could. I know you're taking care of family stuff here, so you have a good evening. Uh, you know, tell your sister hello from us. We'll do, Brian. I, take I, take, I, take it easy on Ron, please. Hey, how can, how can you thank us for having you on? It's your show. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell am I saying? <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on, Brian. All right, Margaret. <laughs> all right. Hey, don't you. lose all your money. Yeah, no, that not much chance of that. Okay. All right. See you guys. All right, uh, Brian, I'm going to go down and, and, and call off some of the people in the chat room, okay? Good move. Uh, we got John Coopy in here with us uh, tonight. We got Ray Millwood. We got BC and the FK Bob, Cindy and the Foster Kids. We got Gorilla Man in here that we were talking about, Greg Pittman. We got Chris the QC guy. We got Major Hazard in here. We got Johnny the Drone Flyer. Uh, we got Birdman 316 RC, Parks and Tech, Cigar Nation Warriors, uh, FSU Grad 03 with us, Better with the Drone uh, was in here, uh, Jet Martin was with us, Coast to Coast Drones was in here, hello, um, Bill, uh, True Drone Reviews is in here with us. Yeah, that's me, Ron. Yeah, uh, let's see here. Um, I think we got everybody now. Um, I think I'm caught up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. If anybody has any questions about the A3 for Brian, please uh, post them here, and we will try to um, cover them. Um, what's here? I, um, I think I've got everybody. I'm scrolling all the way back. Uh, Matthew Cundiff was in here, uh, so I think I've got everybody. All right. So was there anything uh, you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, I wanted to mention a couple more things about the uh, the A3 that I didn't get to mention. <clears throat> it was that it, um, <clears throat> it has this nice little button on here. Where's my camera? Right here. There you go. And that's the uh, GPS on an, uh, the GPS and sport mode button. <clears throat> and I demonstrated this in the little video I made. What's nice, you can switch between this on the fly. Wow, that is good. You can take it, you know, say you want to fly around in the sport mode and, um, you know, you're just zooming around there in the sport mode and then you want to just go to the GPS mode. You don't have to land it and reset. You just flip the button. That's all. Just hit the button. It takes the GPS off. And then you'll see the drifting and all that start, but that's okay. what it does, you know. So, it so, just has the, uh, you know, it just has the uh, regular old uh, barometer altitude, hole like the Zeno. Right. So it will start drifting a little bit, but I mean, it's not severe. But so, you'll so, notice it because as soon as you know the thing will be sitting there drifting around, and as soon as you click on that GPS button, it instantly stops. You huh. know, it just instantly just stops dead in its tracks right there. It'll right. just freeze right like that. So and then it won't it won't move at all. So, so sport mode is out to hold mode. No, it well the GPS mode is too. Yeah, but the sport mode has altitude hold in it too. But the sport mode doesn't have GPS. Right, it doesn't okay. have GPS. It turns right. the G. It's like the Addy mode, say on your Phantom, you know, Phantom Four, right. Or whatever. Yeah, right, yeah. whatever like that. And then it does have, if you go into the menus, um. One second here, boys. <laughs> um, it has these um, different, uh, you know, like orbit and follow me and selfie mode. It has all those things on it too. You just have to go into one of these sub menus. The quick shot. The, the yeah, you can. Me. It'll do an auto landing. You can uh, has the return to home. See, there's no buttons on the controller for any of this stuff. You have to go into the screen. You have to go into the menus on the screen to be able to see any of this. And that's why getting one of them sunshades is going to be imperative unless you can go outside and stand under a tree. Right. In any kind of sun, you can't see this screen. Any kind of sun whatsoever. You're <laughs> blind. You're blinded completely. I guess at two hundred twenty nine dollars, we couldn't expected. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, a, a real good screen on that. 
Right. Now, I don't know what this fixed wing mode is. I didn't try that when I was out there. But the Mavics have them, too. It, um, uh, the sticks work a little different. I know that. Yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe Cuppy, if he's in there, he can in, or Gorilla Man might know. Oh, he's leaving. But anyway. Um, see, here, here's the other mode that has cinematic mode, which I'm sure that means it goes slow as molasses. Okay. Has this fixed swing mode, the headless mode, the selfie mode, the follow me, the orbit. The the orbit is like a point of interest type deal, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I messed with uh, when I took it out for that first flight, because I only have one battery. I mean, it's hard to demonstrate all this crap when you only got one battery, right? Oh, the flight time. The flight time is very good on it. It's like 18 minutes, I think. About 17. Like yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, but it has this selfie mode, I guess, where it turns around and looks at you or whatever. But the um, the follow me is, and I demonstrated this, is the um, it follows the controller. It doesn't have the follow, because I showed this in the video. It doesn't have the, where you draw on the screen, where it draw you. See, on the Mavics and them, I can draw a picture of me on the screen. And then I can set the controller down and walk away, and it'll follow me. The Zeno has that too. Yeah. Well, not this. This follow me follows the transmitter. Yeah, but I mean, Zeno, you could you could draw all the box around you even on yeah. the Zeno, which, right. is only, which is only a few dollars more than this. Right. Well, them are the ones with the real technology. Okay. This is this is technology because I demonstrated it. I went and I took the controller and I was going like this, and you could see the quadcopter going back and forth like that you know <laughs> while i was moving this i wasn't moving at all you right, know right. so if you want to follow me on this you have to be carrying the transmitter right know? i mean I, I don't know about you but you know the follow me that all sounds great when i first get a drone i'll try to follow me but once i've demoed it for a video i must never ever use it again i never use it i i i use it when i'm making youtube videos right right Other than that i never i never turn it on yeah, i mean i don't i don't just walk out to the park and say you know what i'm going to just have this drone follow me around for for no right. in particular right what's the point the only the only times i ever see follow me where it's really cool is where somebody hops in their car and it follows them you know that's that's cool that yeah. that does that you know but i'm not going to do that or if I did something like if I was water skiing or, or jet skiing or something like that, I'd ski, ski down the side of a mountain. Yeah, that right. would be pretty cool, but I don't do any of that stuff. Right. I'm not, yeah. I live in too urban an area to get in my car and drive around, have this thing follow me around. Yeah, it would right. crash in about 39 seconds. It'd be in some tree somewhere. Right. Or, or we have what we call phone lines all over the place. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem too. But, um, but really, I mean, the, the kind of you know finalize things a little bit i mean for for two and i know it cost what 299 at first but anywhere from two to, say two at 229 the technology you're getting this 83 is amazing just think a couple of years ago we were paying 200 dollars for drones that that had none of this that had lousy cameras and no stabilization and no right. features right. or whatever so the value we're getting for our 229 dollars is amazing compared to where we were just a year or two ago I would pick this over the Spark any day, any day of the week. And I like the Spark. Don't get me wrong. I wow. would pick this over the Spark. The That's camera cool. quality is is like pretty damn equal, but this thing has the advantage. You can see it way better, you know, just the, when you're flying it out there. It's just easier to see. It seems to fly nicer. I think it's just actually better as a quadcopter than the Spark is. Yeah. Wow. wow. Um and, um, you know, the 1080p video, a, a lot of, uh, I talked to a lot of guys, you know, they have older computers, they can't add a 4K video, they don't give it, they don't give a hoot about 4K video, any of the 1080p's, you know, perfectly good in most, most use right. I don't, I don't have any 4K monitors off of my computer, and I watch most of my stuff on the computer in 1080p, so I don't know, I can't tell the difference, you know. I mean, yeah, it's, um. Yeah, again, if you have a you know a, a really good monitor, yeah, you could probably see it. But again, a lot of people watch stuff on their phone. There's no way you can see the difference on your phone or iPad between 4K or 1080p. I say no way. Maybe if you're some kind of professional or whatever, but most, right. 
people aren't going to see the difference on, on, on a mobile device or anything beyond like a huge screen. I got a 27 inch monitor, but it's not 1080p. Okay. I mean, it's not, it's not 4k, you yeah. know, it's just regular yeah. 1k, you know, 1k, I guess they call it 1k. 1K. Yeah. I have the, I have the 27 inch iMac 5k screen. And, and, you know, when I, when the internet worked good enough, I watched the videos that are in 4k and 4k, but I can't tell you that, you know, they always look better in, in, in 4k, uh, you know, maybe they do, but I can't say the, you know, the, when I watch it in 1080p, I'm perfectly happy with it. So. Looks good to me. So, um, anyways, uh, Chris Q, 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 QC guy says he's gone. He says good night uh, to, to everybody. Good night, Chris. Looks like John Coopy, but I but I know if I bought the A3, I wouldn't use it anywhere. Amazing, you know, he's not going to take any because he's not going to be at uh, some think location flying it. Yeah, John says most people are happy with 1080p. Grill man says he keeps getting kicked off. We're Koopy, not Koopy can fly it outside his back porch now. He's right. got plenty of room out there now. Yeah, he's he's got that nice shard. And Grill man says he keeps getting kicked off. It's not us. It's not us, Grill man. We're not doing it. Oh, Q, oh, Chris, the QC guy said he has a code uh, a code for the A3 for 229. Just message him. Um, if nobody, if anybody doesn't know, Chris has uh, collected money for children's hospitals in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, I believe it was, maybe it was for cancer research, but anyhow, children, it's a good cause. So if anybody wants that, get a hold of uh, the QC guy and use one of his links to um, buy the uh, the A3. I think he's already raised his goal was a thousand. He's already at a thousand, but I guess he's gone for two thousand. So um, you know, there you go. Um, so anybody consider using chris's link but um I, I know again it's tempting to hit that buy button on this thing for 229 did you would you get it at, would you pay 299 for it brian yeah no 289 which 289. was yeah they had a they had a um bang good had like ten dollar off thing going a coupon oh, or something like that yeah um greg Pittman says grill man was missing android 8 cannot get the album to work Okay, I guess they're talking on. Uh, maybe they're talking about the Zeno. Um, they they couldn't get the Android version of the um, the you know the Hopson app update, but um, I think it's finally out now. But Girl Man found some kind of workaround, but they were having trouble with that picture album. Have you? Yeah, you, on the latest. I don't know if it's the latest two or just the latest one, Brad. If you can actually use the the picture album on the Zeno app, so you can see the stuff on your phone immediately before you get home and. You know, put the memory card in your computer or whatever. Never messed with that. Yeah, yeah. What do they do? They have a cache on there. I've never messed with theirs. Well, they, they, they the button was there for a long time for the photo album, but it never worked. Then it was gone for a while on a couple of firmware updates. Then it, now it's back and it works. Yeah. Okay. Because well, I, I use the one only on my DJI stuff. I never use it on the, you know, on the other ones. Yeah, um, it, it it works on it works on the iPhone. I think it works on Android now, but I'm not sure. Maybe somebody can confirm in chat that's using the Xeno app on Android. But um, anyways, well, it's um, you know it, it's kind of nice. We got Phoebe has two good products out now at two different price points, so they kind of cover the whole market. They have the A3, which you know is 1080p two axis gimbal and then they have the x8 which if you need 4k you need the three axis gimbal and i guess it's a little more robust and that's on sale generally for 399 399 right. Also, right. that's that big. looks well worth the money also actually yeah yeah it, i mean um, it's a lot of good products out there in the under 500 dollar market now where they did used to be much outside the spark there was nothing good for under 500 dollars for a while right right the spark was kind of like the leader in you know, in that little niche area, and they they really cleaned up with that spark, man. That thing sold a boatload. Oh, I bet you. Oh man, DJI they cleaned up on that spark. I bet they're. I bet you it's their best selling maybe model ever. You know, because of the price point. And yeah, right. Well, because of the price point. Well, re remember a drone you reviewed? Uh, I'm going to say three years ago at least. It was a un a little unique drone, and, and it was kind of a forerunner of the spark. It was the breeze. The breeze. And it had like 
it had a lot of stuff the spark had you know it had like kind of 4k but it, what it wasn't stabilized at 4k and it kind of, and it had a good photo app, but it was hobbled in many ways like the range it was, it was hobbled with the range and the control and that was all and that was all you could not get around it you could not get around it and the controller too it came out with no controller at first at first i bought it with no controller and then it finally came, then they finally released a bluetooth controller but it was a bluetooth controller only right. it, wasn't, uh, right. it was a gamepad controller yep so it, it seemed like Oh, it was. A, I made a video about it. I called it "Unique Breeze: A Marketing Disaster." It was the first video I ever saw of yours, I believe. <laughs> I was sitting in the car screaming. Yep. <laughs> Again, Dave and 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 Birdman told me to watch it, and from then I've been following you ever since. But you know, I I think maybe DJ looked at the breeze, and then they looked at your video and said, "Listen, that that crazy guy made that video in the car. We're going to do all the things he said." <laughs> And then we're, we're going to come out with the drones, you know, it's just a little bit better with the correct. And that's basically what Spark is, is the breeze with all the corrections made, right? right. It's exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. <laughs> it's, it's a breeze with the corrections made. Because the breeze, it's a solid piece of hardware. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. you got you, great motors on it. You said so you crippled it with that range. You sent a breeze to somebody recently and they made a video. Was I, it gave one the, I gave one to Ryan Duvall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have because I bought another one on that ninety-nine dollar deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, they had the 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 breeze with the control. Okay, now listen to this. They had the breeze with the controller for ninety-nine dollars. Oh wow! Well, so I took my old one and sent it to him that I paid five hundred dollars for. <laughs> I sent that to him, and then I kept the ninety-nine dollar one because it was new. Yeah. So but there was nothing wrong with the other one. I never wrecked it or anything. Yeah. Right, right. That thing's almost impossible to crash. Huh. It's so slow. It's yeah. almost impossible to crash it. It's almost like if if Unique would have just kept that in the drawing board a little bit longer, and, and just and made the corrections. Oh, they, no, I don't think it had nothing to do with the drawing board. I think they knew what they could do. It was the way what they were marketing it to. They were marketing it to teenagers to take selfies. That was what the marketing whole deal was. And and what, what DJI did with the Spark is they marketed it the same way, but they put the other option in there that you could get the controller and fly it like a regular quadcopter. Right. If you ever go back to DJI's website, right back to when the Spark came out, they marketed it to teenagers. It was the same marketing campaign with the kids with sticking their tongue out, looking at the screen, you know, doing all the high fives and all that crap. They put the same kind of ad out as Unique did. But they also put out a controller to let you fly it and have decent range and all that if you didn't want to go the teeny bopper route. So the old men like us would buy it. Right. And fly you know, they marketed it both ways. To fly it like a real drone. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, without much work, Unique could have, they could have grabbed that whole market segment. Right. They could have. Now, I've never did any of that crap with my Spark because when I bought my Spark, they didn't have a transmitter. So I had to buy it without the controller. I did one flight. I waited two more months till I could get a controller till they came in stock and then I got the controller. But I never took mine out and did that crap or, oh, you know, doing this gesture. I never did any of that garbage. You know, well, I, don't, uh, I don't go for these gimmicks. I, I just don't. I just not into it. Well, I, I bought it, you know, um, I, I, I was already following Billy Kyle there and he drove up to the show in New York to see the spark thing or whatever. And I was in contact with him and he, he said, go ahead and get it. So I pre-ordered, I think I pre-ordered like before the show was even over and I got it like, I don't know, you know, like, like I was one of the first people to get it. That's not a, not a big time reviewer, but right. I ordered the fly more kits. So I got it with the extra batteries and the controller and whatever. And I went out the you know the first week and I tried to you know the right the gestures the, and all that shit you know they kind of halfway worked and they were unreliable and to, and I made a couple of videos and I've never done anything since except fly like a roll drone with the controller right right that's the way I fly it that's <laughs> just like that mantis I have that unique mantis it has that voice commands in there yeah yeah you know, that's a five hundred dollar product and it would probably work but I'm not trying that. I'm not doing that. You know, I, I, it would be my luck. I would say something like take off and it would flip upside down and crash into something. That well, would be, 
or, or worse, it can fly over a lake and you accidentally say land or think, right. <laughs> I think you said like, you may say something else, but I think you say land and it's, and it's bobbing in the water. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I never tried any of that kind of mumbo jumbo, the gestures. And that's just like these, um, this uh, snap tain thing I had. I did a review on. I got it actually packed in a box already. I'm sending it to Cuppy. But, uh, you know, them snap tain toy quadcopters, them things fly really well. But er uh, there's a few of them they have that have that uh, those gimmicks in there, the voice control and the gestures and all that. I've tried. It, it don't work. It don't even work, hmm. let alone screw up. I was sitting there talking to myself the other day making this video. I said I hit the button for the voice commands and – it tells you when you hit the button what to say. And I said all this shit, nothing happened. It never took off. It never did anything. The <laughs> motors never even started. So I just said, oh, screw it. I ain't bothering. I, I've never even tried to voice commands on the GoPro. You know, they, they suppose that works by telling it to start, stop. I've never full with that yet. Right. I never, I never messed with them either. Oh, Brian, we got some comments here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Ryan said, so John says, Ryan was super, super grateful for that. I guess he's referring to the um, unique. Yeah, the breeze. Oh, and guess what? Parks and Tech said, speaking of gimmicks, because of these guys, I had to buy the golden egg. Yeah, the golden egg was good. The golden have they, egg. Have they ever come out with a golden egg, too? They've had a bunch of them things. They, they that was one of them Christmas things they had a couple of years ago. They had one out of Christmas time. You need to fly that that big egg again, Ron. I'm telling you, I have got so much crap that I have not been able to get to. I haven't got that. Oh, here's here's one thing I haven't even got to fly yet. You remember when I bought this thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, that looks interesting. Yeah, this is that. Uh, hell, I don't even remember the name of it. It's been so long since I bought it. And I forget. I did the unboxing and setup video. I haven't had a chance to get it out. I. Just, I this is that. This is that A E E something eleven. It's a big drone. Yeah, it's big. Um, now, I know it flies because I took it off in the house, you know, because I'll I'll fly almost anything. I even flew my typhoon in the house. So oh guess what? Uh, uh, I'll take off anything. Brian just joined us. Uh he says hello, gentlemen. And John Coopy asked you, what is it, that big drone? That's an AEE something eleven. How old's that thing? I've had it for like a, a month and a half. But what is it never flew it yet? Market race right? been around a little while. Pardon? Oh, it's been around for a, a while. I got that real super cheap on a closeout on eBay. You do great on eBay. Cheap. I think I got it for 140 bucks. You should be a professional at eBay uh, uh, drone hunter. You just got to keep looking. That's all. Right. Persistence. Right. Uh, RD Drone says that came out in 2015 or 16. Yeah, it's it old. It's old. Yeah, no doubt. But well, the battery and everything's still good on it. Well, speaking of older drones... I still haven't. I still haven't been able to do the review on the uh, tower drone you sent me. What are you the, doing with them stupid prop guards on there? Pardon the props. Yeah, the prop guards. Well, um, I don't know how to fly, so I want to make sure I don't like. Uh, it has a regular controller, don't it? I think so. Yeah, it has a regular control. All you got to do is watch them lights. Okay. There's, there's lights on there. You'll see them. That's how you know what the orientation is. Always oh. keep the lights when you take off. The lights face you. Okay, and I think I have to get the, the phone app going too to get the, yeah. the video. And uh, I still haven't even got this other one out of the box you sent. I'm gonna. I've only got to fly once since I've been moving. I flew the Zeno last Monday, and I, I don't think I flew another drone since I flew the Mavic on Memorial Day. But I, yeah. I got this this one too you sent. Yeah, still got to be unboxed. Right, that uh, that thing flies great. Now I couldn't. I think I was having trouble getting the video to work. Yeah, because that has that modular camera. You have to pull the camera out of the nose. Okay. You have to go back and watch my video. The camera is in the nose, and you pull the camera. You squeeze this little tab, and it pulls the camera out, 
and there's a, a micro SD card in there. Okay. And you, you have to put the micro SD card in there and then plug it back in. It has FPV? Yeah. Okay. It has an app and all that crap, but but the the micro SD card goes in the nose of the camera. You've got to take it apart. Well, here we go. We'll do a we'll do a live unboxing on the air, Brian. How's that? There you go, Ron. <laughs> it's a it's a cow dang right? That remember they used to make that K dang. Katie, they had that real big drone everybody had like about three years ago. That I was, yeah, it's great. It flies great. I have it. The Sky Warrior. Okay, everybody. I, it. It. I, I never did get it. It flies great once you strip all the garbage off of it. You have to take off the camera, take off the legs, and all that crap. And it flies okay. great. One of those. It flies like crap with all that the Wi-Fi interference and the camera hooked on, the legs on. It flies terribly. Remember, once you, once you turn the Wi-Fi off, it flies great. Remember, everybody used to hate those Wi-Fi flyers. Yeah, it's in there. Oh, look! I here's the controller. Oh, look! Yeah. That's a real nice controller, Brian. Yeah. That's why then you stick the phone, you pull it apart, you know, stick the phone oh, in there. Feel good on this. Yeah, it looks nice, man. And look, it fits. I've never, big. I've never had a bad K Dang uh, flyer. It fits they a big one. Good. Too. Yeah. Stuff upside down here. Oh, Ron, the controller don't have batteries. You just plug it in with the. It has the built-in battery. Oh, cool! And here's yeah. the uh, here's the drone battery. I'm at. Yeah. That's it. Here's the uh, the charger. Right now, that charger charges the controller too. Okay. Here's our little. Uh, hey, look, they have a the little selfie drone too. Yeah, it's garbage. <laughs> and here here's the drone itself. Yeah. Here's the module camera you were telling. Yeah. Me. Oh, look, it, it tilts up and down. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's motorized. I can feel it. Yeah. Well, that's real nice. And then we have, oh, look. It's, it's real good. It's got prop guards for when I'm learning. Yeah, right. And a full set of extra propellers. I would have thrown them in the garbage if I wasn't sending it to you. <laughs> I, I, I. All my toy quads, I always put the props on. Like, I remember the first time I got the Bugs 3, somebody said, why do you got the props? Prop cards on that thing. <laughs> yeah, I, right, John. We still do. We still hate them things. <laughs> I have Wi-Fi flyers. Yeah. Some of, I don't know what it is with that Wi-Fi. Some of those quadcopters, the Wi-Fi doesn't affect the flight of the quadcopters, but a lot of them, it does. The k K70 is a prime example of a quadcopter that uh, you don't want to have Wi-Fi on. It just really affects it. Here's, it a, here's the, the on buttons on the top. Yeah, there's the on and off button right there on the top. That's cool. I can't wait to. Yeah, that thing flies great, man. Oh, I can't wait to my field. Just wait for a non-windy day. I have to get like that little basketball court you fly in with the fence. I, I know why you do that, so it won't get beyond the fence, right? Well, if the crack gets away and flies away, it, it'll stop. You know, right. it'll stop it, you know. Right. right. Is this these little Wi-Fi drones, you never know what's going to happen with these suckers. They'll take off for the hills. And then if it's gone, then I don't get to send it to somebody. Did you see the um, did you see D DJ Soul Force's latest not his latest video, but one of his later videos where he said he had his first float away? He did drone, he he flew it around for a while, then he couldn't control it anymore, but it had out two holes and just stayed there. But eventually the wind came and it just slowly floated away on him. He, he well, he's, lu him. he's lucky that it took that long because usually altitude hold quads, once you lose the bind, they'll just go higher and they'll just go, they'll just go. <laughs> they won't just stay there. They just drift away, you know. Huh. Well, he didn't get it back and eventually drifted in like a swamp or whatever. But yeah. uh, you know, but he called it a float away because for a while it just it just stayed there. He couldn't he couldn't yeah, do it anymore. Flyaways, uh, that happens. I've had one. I've had two, two flyaways. Yeah, I, I've had um, I've had one or two. Well, the, usually when I'm flying these toy quadcopters. You know, I'll I'll say it while I'm making the review. I'll notice the where it starts to lose the bind. You know what I mean? Unless you just like take it out and try to do like a range test or something stupid with one of these kind of things. If you just inch it out gradually, that you'll notice as you're flying it out there. Say you go 100 feet and then you go out 120 feet, 130 feet. You'll notice it start to lose the 
the bind. You know, you'll notice the lag in the controls. When you see that lag, you notice it's lo it's losing the transmission signal. That's time to bring the back. quadcopter and the transmitter. So that's when I stop and I'll say, <laughs> I'll make some kind of comment like, okay, I'm starting to lose the bind here. And then I'll just pull it back. Well, if you keep forcing it out, then it's going to completely lose the bind. Uh, I and then it's going to go away. Yeah. I bring it back and I walk towards it. Yeah. Well, you can do that. That's what I did with that. Uh, I don't know. It was that uh, turd that I sent to Ryan Duvall. Oh, yeah, yeah. That Weemer or Weemius or whatever the hell that yeah, yeah, yeah. The one I, had to walk out the of, I had to walk out to the middle of the field to get it. it, it look, everybody remarked how good it looked. Yeah, it looks cool as hell, but it's the biggest piece of crap ever. <laughs> It was a major turd. John Coopy saying the, the uh, X3 for 229 is an amazing price. A3 for 220. Yeah, it's, it's, it's well worth that money. He says, I really like it. He says he's really tempted. Yeah, it's really nice. So make, make, your, make your mortgage payment first, John. And, and, and Major Hazard said you start to see uh, lag in the sticks, just what you were talking about on his Wi-Fi guys. Yeah. When you start to see, feel that lag in the sticks, don't go any further. That, that's your warning right there that you're getting ready to lose it. And, and John says, is the Weemius XD, he said that that was so bad. Yeah. Oh, and, and Bert, Birdman said there's a, there's a cat butt on your shelf. That what? There's a cat butt on your shelf. Yeah, that gets the cat. He's, he's hanging out over there. <laughs> He's in her, He's a big drone flyer too. Yeah, I'm gonna, let me grab something real quick over here. Buddy. Oh, you get you get your stuff, and I'll, I'll entertain the crowd here. So, um, did anybody get to fly today? Anybody have any good weather? John, did you get anything in the air today, or you've been uh, unpacking boxes? I know Birdman probably flew today. Did you did you whoop a little bit uh, today, Birdman? And Parks and Tech says that's a sweet looking drone. I guess he means a Kading or Cowding or however we're saying this. Here's something I got a while back. I've never had a chance yet to open it up. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's my first racing drone right there. Wow. But I haven't had a chance to open it yet. You've been, you've been hampered by some weather also. Oh, right? it's been like the last two weeks here have been terrible. I mean, even when I made that Zeno video the other day, you could see the wind. It's just gushing all over the place. Wow. But I said, I hell with it. I got to get out here and make this video, get it over with. You know, it's funny. But it's like the whole country's bad. Uh, Soul Force is telling me down in South Carolina, he hasn't been to fly, he isn't able to fly for weeks because of uh, rain and, and wind. Yeah. Well, these winds, I've never seen winds like this here. This, for this. It's been like 14 days in a row that we've had like 25 mile an hour winds. Wow. I don't, you know, that's wow, you know, like Miami type stuff. You hey, know. We got we were just talking by Raymond Millwood. He he said he tried to fly, but he couldn't get the sticks to cooperate. I don't know what he was flying. And and Herb Flying High joined us. Oh, uh, Raymond, I think Ray has a. I think he has a Zeno. I th doesn't he have one? He he has a lot of. Um, he has that. Uh, he does have PV racing drones. Also, he has that little one, uh, that Mobilis that he flies a lot. I think Herb Flying High has the Zeno. Yeah, I think he does. Oh, <laughs> I, and the uh, guy, that one guy, the Canadian guy, Tommy Saint Saint Hood or something like yeah, that. Yeah. He has a Zeno. I'm pretty uh, sure. Jet Martin says the weather's good in San Diego. We need to go what? out there. Jet Martin said, what is good in San Diego? You can fly out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be right there. San Diego, here I come. <laughs> Greg Traveler says he flew today. He tested uh, He tested three batteries and precision landing, I guess, on the Zeno. John had good weather the past couple of days, but didn't have time uh, to fly. Okay. Well, we have to do other things, too. Yeah, Ray saying he's got the he's got the uh, oh yeah he okay he's been he's doing the FPV thing now yeah he got the Mobra the the Tyco he he's good too uh, yeah I know I see I watched one of his videos the other day yes Herb has a Z no and Herb's gotten in the RC cars too he's got a real fast looking uh, black RC car he's been 
demo lately. It was so fast, it kept toppling over. He had to put a wheelie bar on it. <laughs> and Soul Force got into cars too. He's got a whole bunch of RC cars now. No, I went. I went. Yes, uh, not yesterday, but Saturday. I went to to the park to put the Insta 360 on the Mavic Pro. Right. But I, as I was driving up to the park, it started sprinkling, so I had to cancel that. I'm dying to try that. Yeah, I'm dying yeah. to try that. And I'll tell you, I have some uh, Insta 3. That thing is not as easy as it looks, that the YouTubers make it look. There's more to that thing than – it's just not some point-and-shoot thing. You know, you have to learn this software. Right, right. Or, you, or your videos are going to look like shit. I've never okay. got my head around the editing process. So I've never really made great use of it. I'm going to figure it out eventually, but it's not as easy as these people make it look. No, nah, no, you're right. You're right. Okay, it's not even close. I mean, you look at these YouTubers and they make it look like, oh, just turn it on, walk out there and all. You know, there's all the way. No, it's not that way. Okay? Right. It's not that way at all. Right. Herb says he's got up to four cars now. Hey, um, what do you think of that new S1 that uh, DJI released? That kind of uh, that toy tank. To toy tank. I'm not, I'm not buying that. Yeah, I don't think much of it. I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, it could be nice, but I don't think it's. Uh, you know, I think I would buy it, play with it a couple times, and then it'd just be five hundred dollars sitting around here collecting dust. Right. Kind of like my Phantom Three. <laughs> <laughs> Phantom, Which I haven't flown in at least a year and a half. But it is a classic. It's an awesome drone. Right. But it's just sitting. Which, which, which three is it? The standard? The standard, yeah. It's still an awesome drone. Yeah. Um, You know, you talked about the uh, Mountain of 360 on the uh, Mavic. I, I tried it last summer at the beach. And I bought some kind of custom mounting bracket so I, I could put it on top because I didn't want to put it in the bottom and hand launch it. Hand. Yeah, well, they, yeah, well, the Insta360 they sell a bottom mount thing for the Mavic Pro. They mm -hmm. have the Mavic Pro kit, but right. I'm not doing it that way. Yeah, I, I'm not dangling that thing from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I I, I bought some third party like a what do you call a 3D printed one right. on top. So I put it on the top right and like. When I put it like kind of low on the top, because they, I was using my GoPro accessories, I had it kind of directly on top. Well, it, it it cut the GPS off. I had to fly an attitude mode, which is kind of funny seeing the Mavic fly an attitude mode. And uh, it did okay like that. You know, again, you just had to fly it right. the GPS. But then I got the idea of putting an extender on it that I had on my GoPro part, so it moved it up. Well, guess what? At that point, I got GPS back, but because I had it kind of high, it made the Mavic right, kind of right. I would see. I would worry about that. We did sitting up high like that. Right. I know. I did. I didn't take it very far, and I brought it right down. I don't have my Mavic. I think my Mavic Pro case is in the car. No, it's right here. I've got everything sitting in the case. Now, on the Mavic Pro, which is right here, the GPS module is all the way here in the back. That's where the GPS module is, right under that little cover right there. Okay. So when you, I'm mounting the, the 360 camera right here, that's where I'm going to mount it with this thing here. I already got the mount all set up. So I'm going to mount it right here like this. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that shouldn't be anywhere near the GPS module. Now, whether or not the why I'll turn the Wi-Fi signal off on the camera right. before I put it on here to take off. Right. I'll have Wi-Fi turned off on the camera, which you might not have done when you did it with yours. So you might have forgot to turn the Wi-Fi off on the camera. I may have. You know, but... I was thinking that when you when you told me that you told me that last week at some point we were talking on some stream or something. Yeah. And you told me it was interfering with your or you left it in the comments when I did the unboxing on the camera. That. Yeah, you left the comment about it, but 
you might have forgot to turn the Wi-Fi signal off from the camera. I could so have. Yep. yep. That might have did something with the GPS. Who knows? It might not. It might not. It might just been magnetic also. So you just well, I'm interested to see if you get better results. If you get good results, I may try it again. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on there, and it's taken off one way or another. I'm going to lift it off. Right. Okay. Right. I mean, even if I lift it off five feet in the ground and it starts going ape shit, I can grab it. Right. You right. know what I mean? Right. And then I'm just going to let it sit there for three or four minutes and watch the phone and watch the GPS numbers and all of that stuff. Right. I'm going to watch all that for yeah. five minutes before I even start to move anywhere. Well, I, I, I could definitely tell you I never had a loss of control. Again, when I tried it at a lower height, it just was an add to hold mode, but addy mode, but it had no loss of control. I could control it great. I just had no GPS. And then when I mounted it high and I had GPS back again, I had no loss of signal or control. It just, you know, the weight was barely distributed and it made it rock a little bit. Again, it was never any, any sense it was going to fly away or I was going to lose any connection to it. Well, you know, the thing about it is it's a, it's a very expensive, mistake if you make a mistake right right okay because if you fly that thing 30 feet in the air and it crashes well that camera is going to be history right and the mavic pro is going to have some damage right right you know, so uh, but i still want to do it i don't care i want to try it out yeah yeah uh parks of tech says uh his his zeno's getting a 361 install attached to it to the bottom it's been poor weather recently but that's the next project for him yeah he said it may not be the brace thing, but he's going to do it anyways. Right. That right. I'm doing it anyway. Yep. That's our channel's motto. It may be not may not be the brace. I'm trying thing. it anyway, do no it matter anyway. what. Yeah. Uh, and John Cooper says good idea. Thank yeah. you, John. I am definitely going to try it. And so if it takes a crap, then I don't have a Mavic Pro. Uh, I have the Mavic Air still. I got the Zeno. And I got the Egg. I got the Typhoon. I got all that crap. You got a, You still got a warehouse full of this. Yeah, I got a warehouse. I got a warehouse full of crap. And you got Spark, and hopefully you got Spark Two uh, coming out any day now. Yeah, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Now, did you wind up getting the um, the uh, the Osmo Action? No, I'm not getting that. I bought that that 3D instead. Right, right. I bought the X Insta. I thought I could get more out of the Insta 360 than I could the Osmo Action. Right. I mean, I got a GoPro 7, right? What do right. I need the Osmo Action for? It, you got, I mean, it's like this much difference between them, right? right. You basically got. I mean, seriously. I mean, how much difference is there really in them two cameras? Right. Really, it's not that much. It's very close. I mean, that one guy that I watch all the time, um, I think is Ben Authentic or something yeah. like that. Ben, he likes the GoPro Seven better. Huh. You know. Yeah. He I, likes the GoPro Seven better. So. I don't think you can go wrong with either one, Brian. Right. I think they're both good cameras. Yeah. You know. And did you see they already got an appraise for? Um, I saw people selling the um, the Hero Seven for as low as three nineteen, and then somebody was selling the uh, Osmo Action for like two ninety nine. So the good thing for consumers is. It's good. Price wars are going to break out on these right. cameras, right? So, but and, the thing about it, well, the thing about a price war is DJI can afford it where GoPro can't, right? Right. Because okay. DJI has a lot more cash than GoPro, and they have a lot more. You know, they can afford the. They could afford to put that thing out at two fifty and put GoPro out of business if they wanted to. Right. Uh, you know, remember. Uh, Probably two years ago, I mean, again, don't take any stock tips of me, but remember at GoPro, the stock was in terrible trouble. And right. that's they, when the drone, the whole drone thing, they lost all that money on that drone. They, they thought they were going to get bought by somebody and right. uh, I don't know, whatever happened. It just never happened. Right. I, I guess they find out themselves back this year. I, I guess that whole disaster with it, uh, not selling the, you have the drone. What's the, right. the what, drone's great? I love it. But I mean, financially, I think that's that hurt them. Right. Oh, no doubt. I mean, look at all the money they poured into R and D. Right. You know, a lot of this stuff is R and D money. That's millions of dollars. Right. Millions and millions and millions of dollars that, that you never recoup. Our, you know, you never get that money back. Yeah. If, Our, if, if the product doesn't work, you lose all that money. 
right? Yeah. And you spend a lot of money. On, how many millions do you spend on promotion, advertising? Right. Too? And then the, all the manufacturing, you got to get all that started up. You got to get a factory going and all that. That's millions and millions of dollars. Right. You know, so. Right. No, so they lost a boatload of money on that thing. Right. A boatload of money. But I guess they sold them all because, you know, Best Buy, there's hardly anything left. They have a couple of batteries and a couple of props. Other than that, it's gone. And right. they were the ones, they were the ones that were kind of closing that out for GoPro. Was yeah. Best Buy. You right. know. Just like they closed they closed that other drone out, the solo. Remember, they were like the last Yeah, time. they did the close out on that too. Right. Because that's where I got mine that I never use. Um, John Cooper just mentioned here that Perth West just got the uh the FEMI 83. Yeah. And, um uh, I, I, I actually, I asked, I'll give you a little inside baseball. I asked Dave to come on with us tonight, but he said he's been so busy reviewing um, other drones. He, he's only had time to do the unboxing on the A3 and that he had an appointment. This mor it's it's this morning for him. Yeah, so, but he, he told me his weather's been bad too. Yeah. 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 How can the, the weather's bad over the whole world? It's like how can yeah, the whole world have bad weather except, right. for, except for San Diego? Right. He, that's why he did, well, that's why he went out and did those couple of truck and car videos the last week because it was windy and shit. He couldn't fly. Right, right. So anybody could drive those cars in the wind. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Hey, Jeff Martin brought up a good point. He said, uh, uh, did G DJI lose 150 million last year? No, he's talking about that parts scandal. Remember? Yeah, that, was a, that was a fraud. That wasn't loss of money. That was internal. That was a theft. Yeah, it was internal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, it's still kind of, it's still a loss of, yeah, not revenue, but yeah, that was that was Bill's uh, ace and that one of Bill's uh, sources. Yeah, it worked. Was was one got fired. Hmm. It was a woman that was given that Ostelov dude all the information. His, she his, was, his she, sister. It was his sister. Uh, it was his sister. Well, she got fired for stealing. So. Maybe she's got the hundred fifty million in her. Right, maybe she wow. does. Maybe her and Austin ever living on the French Riviera right now. <laughs> he doesn't need to do any more reporting. <laughs> uh oh, I got, got a new report. Jet Martin says, "Yeah, San Diego." He said, uh, "Grant, it's been gloomy." And uh, John Coopy says, uh, "Australia's entering fall and winter." Yes, they are. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a different season over there. Uh, her her flying high says the FAA messes with the weather. Yeah, right. Yeah, they do. Amazon. Major <laughs> Amazon's has, doing it. Major has his insider trading to the DGI uh, thing. And parts. Well, of I don't know if it was insider trading. I think it was a parts. It was a it was a supplier fraud yeah. from what I heard. Here's the here's the best I can explain it, Brian. There were people at DGI, right, that were buying the parts for the Phantom. We'll say the Phantom 4 series. And what they would do is um they would buy the parts of the parts supplier. The parts supplier would would um the parts on we'll say the parts cost a hundred dollars. Right. But, but they fake the invoices like they cost two hundred dollars. Right. So, so they were so they were pocketing a hundred dollars right. on the parts, and, and they, they were splitting it in half. Right. Well, that's the way people do that shit with the Defense Department shit all the time. There's so much fraud in all that, you know. It, it, buy it, one it, bullet, it's a, you know fifty fifty nine million dollars. You know. It, what was it? Somebody bought a million dollar toilet one time. For yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Crap. yeah. yeah. There's so much fraud and waste in that Defense Department budget. It's sickening. Well, maybe so rolled over to China. Yeah. Right. Um, Parks and Tech said uh, beer delivery drone is the uh, uh, next. I'm telling you, all this delivery crap. I saw this. Who? Oh God, who was it the other day? It wasn't Amazon? There was another outfit. Oh, they're going to start delivering McDonald's with drones. Man, give me a break. What are you going to charge me? Seventy nine dollars for a French fry? Because <laughs> you're going to bring it with? What do you think that it's going to be free to fly these drones all over the? Believe me that. The infrastructure to do what these people plan on doing is so far down the line. They they, they don't have a clue. You and, and I'll use this as the prime example. And I know why corporations want to do this because they want to fire people. Okay. It's just, it's just bottom line. It's all about the money. Okay. You remember how a few years ago, everybody was so hip to 
these driverless cars. Right. Remember this big fad that Uber, they were going to, you thought that this was coming any minute. Right. Driverless cars. Okay. They were good. Okay. You know, those, all those big wigs at the, in the boardrooms, they're, they're licking their chops. Okay. We're going to be able to fire all of our truck drivers, all of our taxi cab drivers, all this shit's going to go all driverless. As soon as they rolled this shit out, people started getting killed. And now all this crap is on the back burner now. Okay. Las Vegas, I'll never forget. I'll never forget Las Vegas. They started their driverless bus last year. The first bus out of the garage went right down the street and ran over some old lady standing on the street corner. And they pulled it back and have never brought him back out. Hmm. So this technology with this, oh, everybody's going to be sitting in their living room and some drones driving in the window, dropping off a Big Mac. This is a fucking pipe dream. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a pipe dream. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the amount of infrastructure in place that you would have to have to make this a reality, you would have to have charging stations all over the place. I mean, the battery technology is not there to do just you know, one delivery for some drone. He's going to have to go back and recharge a battery. How long does that take? And you know, it's just, it's just not there yet. You know, it's just the Jetsons are still far away. <laughs> you know, that's just like these, that's just like these damn electric cars. Yeah. They're great for driving around in the city, but who in the hell wants to drive from Pittsburgh to Chicago with an electric car when I got to stop in Toledo for seven hours and charge the bed? I could be to Chicago in seven hours driving a regular goddamn car. You know, you pull over an electric car, you drive it on the highway. After a couple hundred miles, you got to pull over for two or three hours to charge the battery. Who in the hell wants to do that? Just the like battery technology is not there for this drone fantasy that these companies have or for this electric car taking over the world thing. The battery technology says ain't there yet. They need to get them hydrogen batteries they need to get that technology going or this stuff will never happen. I don't care what Amazon says. I don't care what freaking Jeff Bezos says. It's not happening yet. Mm -hmm. Period. The infrastructure just ain't there. It's just not there. You'd have to have drone charging stations just like you do cell towers. They would have to be everywhere before this thing could actually be feasible. I mean, just think about it. These drones, how far can they fly, you know, with the battery technology we have? Plus, they're going to have payload. And that reduces the, the amount of battery potential that you have if it's empty. If I'm dragging around 15 Big Macs, yeah, it's I'm not going to get the same flight time if I don't have a, a, any Big Macs. Right. And if it has to go back each time, pick one Big Mac up or whatever, right. uh, uh, you, your Big Mac will be cool by the time you get right. it. I mean, is it, right, if a drone flies from my place, there's a McDonald's three miles down the road here. If some McDonald's is drive flying a Big Mac over to my house on January 20th when it's 15 degrees below zero, what the hell is my Big Mac going to taste like when I get it? <laughs> See, that's why I'm saying this. It all sounds great, but it's a pipe dream. Um, it's a freaking pipe dream. You'll have to put your Big Mac in a little warming uh, tray in the drone or whatever. Yeah. Right. It, it's a pipe dream, man. I don't care. I don't care what anybody says. The amount of infrastructure that you would have to have in place to make this thing work is something that would actually blow your mind. Um, the only way it works, if you live across the street from McDonald's, right. but, you, but, but if you did, you might as well walk across and get it. Right. I'd have a better chance of some employee throwing a Big Mac at me from across the street <laughs> and getting some drone to fly in my window and drop a Big Mac in my lap. <laughs> and get out the window without crashing. And they think that these drones are never going to crash. Okay, what about the driverless cars? They crash all the time and kill people. What do you think these drones are going to just zoom all over the place from here to there, not hit a pole and not hit a building and well, not do this or not do that? Not And not hit another drone. Koopy mentioned in there that, uh, you know, the FAA is clearing the skies for this stuff to get us out of their way. Right, right. Of course it is. It's about the money. But eventually, these people are going to have to put up, even if the FAA does clear certain sections for them, because they're not going to just 
ban everything just because Amazon says, oh, we want to just deliver all this crap. you got to prove to us that you can actually do this to make this work before they're going to start chomping up pieces of airspace. They have to be able to prove to the FAA that they this is actually a feasible thing. You know, they have to have some test markets like with the Big Mac. The test market, I guess, is going to be San Diego. That's going to be the test market for dropping off the Big Macs. Where the weather's good. Yeah. Yeah, when the when there's no hurricanes, you know. It's just like all this other crap with, you know, all this solar and all this. Okay, well, I have electric uh, when the wind's blowing or I have electric when the sun's out. But you still have to have a backup plan when them things ain't happening. <laughs> okay. You know, it's not always it's not always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, okay. well, unless you live in San Diego where it's always sunny and windy. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> uh, um, John Coopy says Domino's is delivering pieces in self-driving cars. Yeah. Or, or I'm saying that self-driving self-driving cars to me are way ahead of the drone thing. They'll be here before the drone deliveries. Oh yeah. The self-driving cars, I'm not saying they don't work. Eventually all this stuff will work, but it's not happening tomorrow. Or the next day. Or the next day. I mean, I'm 61 years old. Believe me, I'll be long dead before this shit's uh, hitting the fan. Huh. Believe me. Well, maybe maybe when we're we're too old to drive around ourselves, the self-driving car will be working. It can take us to our doctor's appointments. Yeah, I'll tell you what. When that damn when that Las Vegas City bus rolled out of that garage on day one and ran over that old lady and killed her. I I listened to this Las Vegas radio station in the morning. Uh-huh. Oh, you should have heard them people on there. That they, they didn't stop talking about that for a whole week. <laughs> I bet. They, they didn't stop talking about that for a whole week. Wow, we, we should have warned Marcus about that. Uh, I, I <laughs> You're right. Stepping out uh, on that street. I don't think they've ever brought him back. I don't think they've ever put him back in service. So they spent all that money and that just went right in the toilet on the first day, day one. <laughs> uh parks and tech says brian great show by the way love it love it. it's always sunny and and john says he agrees it's a great show tonight so you get a lot of compliments out there Our ratings are probably going through the roof oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure everybody ran for the hills when they knew i was coming <laughs> and now you we got you're gonna make you a permanent thing on here Our ratings are probably probably skyrocketing <laughs> but anyway all I'm getting to is I think everybody's getting a little worried a little bit too quickly about this drone delivery and them taking over. I just I just don't see the infrastructure there to be able to make this work right now. I just don't see it. Yeah, I just don't see it. I don't the battery technology is what's really gonna kill them. Right, right. Okay, that's what's really gonna do it. Right. The battery technology just ain't there, man. It just is yeah. not there. It's not even close to being there yet. Right. right. I mean, what, whether, you know, yeah, it's not even close. Even if, even if they said you had to live within a mile of these Domino's or, or whatever, McDonald's to get delivered, that's still the bat battery technology still wouldn't be ready for a mile. Right. Right. And if you live any close to that, you might as well get You might as well walk over and pick it up. Right. And you're tell and you're going to tell me these, uh, these drones aren't going to crash. They're not going to hit into something. They're not going to get hit by a bird, some buzzard. I got these buzzards coming after my drones here all the time. And just think of those buzzards smelled your Big Mac in there. Right. right. Those big turkey buzzards, man. They love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> big Mac. It's all over it, huh? Right. Hey, exactly. Hey, what's, uh, what's, what's changed gears even get more controversial here? What do you think of all these reports that uh, the DJI drones are stealing all your, I guess, your drone footage and sending it back to the uh, whatever the, the Chinese version of the CIA is. Yeah, they're probably doing it, but really nothing we can do about it. And uh, what do you? What well, do you, it, it cost DJI any kind of contracts with the United States government because they went with Barrett. Right, right, right. Um, but you know, again, now, even if there's no proof, even if there's no proof of the, of that happening whatsoever, okay? Yeah, it could happen. See, yeah. that's why the government, okay, it could. It's possible. It it's possible. possible. Okay. Right. So they have to they have to take that into consideration. Right. I mean, uh, you got to realize, I mean, I might want to dive into the politics too much of it, but, you know, everybody knows what China is about. They're about world domination. That's their goal 100 years down the road. I mean, that's what they're about, okay? Everybody knows what they're about. Just because they're running their 
country as a free market economy basically now it's still a communist state okay it's still everything is you know top down economics it's still run by the top it's still run by the government and if they i mean the, the chinese government could walk in the door tomorrow and shut dji down and, and blow up the factory and tear it down and nobody could do a damn thing about it if they wanted to right. okay so let's not forget what china is really all about they're all about what they're about but it could happen. That's why the United States government doesn't want to even take the chance. Right. So um, they don't even want to deal with that. But, but it, it, like many other things, it's like a pickle and drones on purpose. I mean, I have many other devices. My, my, my phone here is made in China. This, this could spy. Um, every camera I have probably is made in China. All these devices, and the, most of them are connected to the internet or Wi-Fi in one way or another now. Why just pick on the drones? Why? Well, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why, Ron, and and I've I've mentioned this before in other chats or in, in videos. The drones have the same stigma that cell phones had when they came out. Okay, you remember when cell phones first came out in about I don't know what it was, 1997 or some shit like that. Right. Cell phones rolled out, and you had so many people that didn't have them. They were kind of jealous of the people that did have them. So then they wanted them banned. You remember how people wanted cell phones banned? There were millions of people screaming that they should ban cell phones. They were dangerous. They were going to blow up the pub. They had brain cancer, this, anything in the world they could come up with to make the government ban them. They didn't want you to do it when you were doing this. They didn't want you to talk when you were doing that. They wanted to do that. So cell phones, when they first came out, had a, a bad stigma. Well, drones are the same way. People don't understand them. So they don't like them. They think they're spying on you. Every, every, if you go to some uh, park and you're flying around, somebody comes out there. Why are you looking at me? Why are you, why are you spying on me? I'm not spying on you. I could give a shit if you dropped over dead tomorrow. I could care less. <laughs> and it's like when I shot that video last week or two weeks ago of that Elizabeth bridge, remember I did that pass over the bridge. Mm -hmm. okay. got real close. I, I mentioned in that video, right at the end of the video or right before, there was some lady staring at me from a porch. I said that. Well, she came out. I didn't put that part in the video. She came out and asked me why I was filming her house. Oh, wow. I said, lady, I'm not filming your house. And I actually showed her the video on my phone that I was not filming her house. Hmm. But that's the stigma that drones have. Right, right. I, I always say that too. Like, uh, you know... Um, Somebody will say film their house, but yet if they live on a popular street, a hundred people could walk by in the course of a couple hours with cell phones that take 4K video, and they can all be walking by that house, filming that house, but they won't come out and say anything to those people. That, that, but that's a different because they understand what that is. They don't understand what the drone is because they don't have one. Mm -hmm. Okay, they don't have one, so they're scared of them. They think that they're up to no good. Yeah. Like I'm telling you, I remember when cell phones came out, believe me. Man, there were so many people that were against those things. And, you know, so many people that didn't have them that were all wound up about them. Oh, you shouldn't have that and this, that, and the other. And you should, those should be banned and this, that. And people don't understand things. They're afraid. Right. Uh, let me ask you, it's like if, if, if you flew a drone, not, not on somebody's property, but off somebody's property, and they called the police and said, "Oh, you're flying drone." The police would come and respond, right? But right. if you walk by, if you walk by somebody's house and you're on the sidewalk, you're not on their property, you're on public property, and you walk by and you film their house with the phone, and they called the police and said, "Hey, somebody walked by my house with the cell phone, and they yeah. were towards my house. They may even take a video." The police would hang up on them, say, "Yeah, right. you're a little Adios, amigos, yeah. or whatever you say." They wouldn't even respond to it or whatever. Right? They wouldn't. But this, this. This phone has as good as a camera as most of my drones. Right. And I can, zoom in, I can zoom in a little bit with this. Most of my drones, I have no zoom. Right. Get Evo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but like you said, it's because of, uh, I guess they're not, not educated. They, they don't know about it. They, they think every drone has the technology of the, of the uh, spy drones that uh, the, the government has that they send over, you right. know, the, the foreign countries or whatever. Right. Get Osama. Right, yeah, right. They think that they have that kind of technology to peep through their shades and, and x-ray vision through their, they don't, they don't know. They're uneducated. So they're scared. Right. Right. You know, they're just afraid of what they don't know. 
So basically but, that's what it comes down to. Well, back to the DJ a minute or whatever. I mean, I mean, I'm sure somebody somebody's flying DJ a drone around sensitive area where they're actually not supposed to, or it's illegal. But like for for you and me, we're flying drones in the public parks over ball fields mostly right. or or you're flying you know over this river that that you go over a lot or i'm flying down the beach did i mean the chinese spies would be they would waste so much of their time looking at my drill footage because it would be nothing in it what are they going to do they're going to invade uh uh the new jersey coastline or whatever they're going to see well we could we could go right in here by this pier here i mean it, it's my, my stuff would be useless to any foreign spies you just don't know what they're using the data for. You just don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, but I mean, I just think my, my stuff, like, uh, you know, what can they actually get from me flying around my uh, the the soccer field where I usually fly? I mean, what, what, what can, and again, that's most, you watch most YouTube videos. It's mostly guys flying around their local fields or ball fields or right. something like that. I mean, to me, I would think, well, that's totally useless information to. Right. It's completely irrelevant. Yeah. Now, Marcus, he told a story one time. He flies out in that, uh, you know, the Snake River, and he he flew. He said he didn't fly that close to the dam, but uh, a person came up with a truck with a car. They worked at this dam or whatever, and they uh, told him about not flying too close. And he he said he didn't. And they said, "Oh yeah, we, you weren't that close, but just in case you were." And right. They, Gave him the card, and the guy said, "If you ever want to fly around here, it's okay. But just call me first and tell me you're going to do it or whatever." And now, okay, I could see something like that, the dam or whatever. But th that's probably an untypical situation. A more typical situation is like, yeah, Koopy flying. If Koopy's flying out in the backyard of his new house, what what's the Chinese government going to do with that? Right. Well, all that tells me, those people come out there and talking to him tells me that they might have some kind of radar going over at the dam uh the little house or whatever that they have there at the dam right i'm sure they have some like workhouse there or whatever one of them shacks right up there not a shack but like a house or whatever yeah. they might have a radar in there right right okay that that picked that up you know you just don't know you know right an electronic flying vehicle or something like that you know it might might be some kind of radar that is the sophisticated to where it knows the difference between a bird and something electronic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because these drones can be picked up now. There's equipment out there that will pick these things up. Right. You can see it. If you go just search on Google, there's companies that make this, these guns that'll shoot these drones down with nets and all this, you know, this is getting to be big business now. Yeah. You know, a lot of companies, they don't want these drones snooping around their, uh, around their fences. So, Right. I mean, that uh, that thing might have had some kind of warning system that set off to those guys came over there. And but, so Mark, they, yeah, oh. but Mark is a son. He was still flying in, like, public, you know. Right. Uh, he wasn't actually close enough to Dan, but a guy was just kind of warning him about not getting right. close to Well, Dan. they were just curious. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And once they came up and saw like, the, uh, a middle-aged old guy or whatever, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. They they lost their concern. Right. They figured he wasn't a Chinese spy. Right, 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 Mark. Right. Uh, he yeah. looked like uh, what, Frank Sinatra from what's that old movie, The Manchurian Candidate? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So I, you know, that's again. I had somebody email me today about the the you know the the the, the, the DJI drones or whatever, and and I, I was trying to tell him. I said, yeah, just like we said. I said it's possible, but I mean. But it actually hasn't been, you know, there's no, like, recorded case of it or whatever. It's just a possibility. Yeah, let me answer this parks and tech over here. Right, I right. think the uh, the 300 limit for Monroeville is not because of the Monroeville Airport, because basically that's closed. Okay, they get, like, one flight every year that comes in there, okay? Oh, really? Um, it's, I think, for the Allegheny County Airport. It extends out this far even though the allegheny county airport is pretty far from here but i do see low flying planes over that park you know <laughs> plus of the heliports he's got to remember about that he's in penn hills and i'm in monroeville which is real close but we have all these heliport these medical medevac ports around here all these hospitals you know i got forbes hospital and upmc east right down the street and they have those helicopter ports on the roof so Hmm. That has something to do with it too. 
Like I said, I have a 300 foot limit where I'm at at that park, but I only go 200. I always stay 100 under. Right, right. So just to be safe. Right. But he's out. He must be out of the. He says he's in Penn Hills. He can do the 400. There must be not no heliport there in Penn Hills. I don't know if there's any hospitals in Penn Hills. Hmm. You were talking about the. Uh... <laughs> You know, the, the cameras and drones are scaring people. Where I'm down here at the shore, my town doesn't have any drone laws per se, except whatever the FAA's laws are. But the next town north of me, Vendor, they don't allow any drone flying between, uh, I don't know, like uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. I guess they probably had people flying over people on the beach, whatever. Right. But the, if you read the laws, if you, if you actually read the whole law, guess what the little disclaimer at the end is? This is for camera drones only. So if I wanted to take a drone up that had no camera on, it, it, it wouldn't be covered by these no flying laws. So they're, they're not really against flying drones. They're against camera drones. Right. Well, there isn't that. Well, didn't you just say that the, the amount, uh, the, the time frame is what the seas, the, the, the vacation season, right? Right, right, right. right. Yeah, well, they don't want you looking in on their vacationers. Right, right. But, but if I, but that means I could take an OG bugs three up there with no camera. And right. Uh, the uh, you know I, I do what I want then right it doesn't make sense I mean when you're flying something like that over you know I've seen your beach videos it's not like you're 20 feet in the air you're up there right you right. know you're flying high over this crap so I don't know why looking down at those people look like ants from right. where you're at right I mean, it's but, not like you could pick one of these people out plus in the summertime I go down there I, I want to fly after 9 a.m. I, I fly before 9 a.m. There's when yeah. I'm flying, the only people on the beach are the beach are the people take care of the beach, beach workers, and they kind of come over, they talk to me, they like because they watch my videos on, on Facebook and they say, Oh, you get some good shots because I always make them look good because they're really, you know, cleaning the beach up nice. Right. Yeah, that be that beach is nice. Yeah. That that, you fly out over there. Yeah. So again, that's nice and clean. Yeah, but I don't I, I only fly again in the summertime. I only fly in the mornings or after seven. So it's sparsely popular. Now that, now that beach that you always have your videos on over there, what do you call that? Margate City Margate, or something? Margate City. Yeah. Now that wasn't hit by Sandy, was it? Well, no, well, Sandy did hit there, but it didn't. It didn't do. Uh, it doesn't look like there was any destruction from them houses on right on the beach. It, it, it didn't. It didn't do any damage. All the flooding came on the back bays because these are all barrier islands. Oh, okay. Yeah, so but it still it didn't get much damage. I mean, luckily it didn't get much damage, but it did. It didn't stop, um, you know, Christy getting all the money from uh, what do right. you call FEMA to to build all the dunes and stuff that we really didn't need. So you're all those nice dunes you see on the beach. That's your tax money that you paid in the FEMA to yeah. put them there. We didn't even really need them. <laughs> but oh, yeah. got to do something with that sand, Ron. Yeah. Well, they, they well they yeah they pumped it all in from uh, you know of course the ocean at the dredging. I, I got a good video a couple years ago where I, I flew like a mile out to where they were dredging and got a pretty good shot on doing it from overhead. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to go back in the archives and check it out. Yeah, it was kind of, again. It's kind of interesting to see that the stands swirling and you know, kind of their operation they were doing. I still couldn't tell you exactly what they were doing. Parks of Texas, Ron. Beautiful beach videos. Hey, thank you. Uh, I may actually, if I ever get this moving done, I may actually get out there and get some fresh ones. Are you still unpacking shit? Yeah, oh yeah. I finally got everything out of the old house in here. The settlement's on the twentieth this week, but I mean the house is spotless. There's not one. There's not anything but maybe a dust bunny in there someplace. So they're not going to be able to pull any crap at the last minute, huh? Guess what I did? I, I went around cell phone the whole house on the way out so they can't they say anything's right. Not right. I'll say, hey, look, this video is dated. This, you know, uh unless a burglar broke in there and did something, um, you know, that house was clean, nothing left. <laughs> I, not even a not even an empty soda can. <laughs> so well. I figured you'd leave it good, Ron. Those people will move in; they'll be very happy to fork over to fork over all their money to you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yes. Yeah, so anyhow, I'm going to sit and try to get. Oh, and this week, it's funny you should say that. This week, I'm going to. I eventually have some free time. And guess what? The weather looks bad all week. Yeah. So, storm, storms, clouds, wind, rain. You mm -hmm. know. I think the weekend looks decent. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try to get out. I am. I have got to get over 
and do a recon visit on that mill, that old closed up steel mill. Okay. I'm going to get over there and do that. What do you think? <clears throat> carry blast furnace. But, you know, whenever I do any of these kind of things like these bridge flights and this, I have to go look at it with my own eyes before I do it. I, do I don't the go there and start flying. Yeah. I have to do a recon on it and look it over and scope it out first. What are you going to fly with that, that mission? Hey, Anafi. Anafi, good. Hey, Anafi, I'm going to take that over there. So I have to get over there one day this week, and I can go over there and do some recon even if it is shitty weather. So at least I'll be able to get over there and look it over. Right, right. So, what, what's your next review coming up? Uh, I don't know. I have like 20 videos in the hole. I don't want to put you on the spot. I just thought was- I, I don't even know, Ron. To be honest with you, I don't. I don't even know what I'm bringing. You, you, can, take, you can take the fifth. I got to get back to these vape videos. To be honest with you, I heard you. In office, Ed. In office, phenomenal. Um, I want to get since you told me about this. I want to get this guy out this week. Nice man. Nice, great. You'll love it. Believe me. Flies as good as a tap. If, if good no, as- flies way better than that. AJRC. Yeah. Remember you said like I did fly just a little bit in the in the side yard, and remember right. when you said you said it was no way it was going to land or whatever. And right. It, well, guess what? It did it for me too. It landed it? It and over. Well, the only thing bad about that is is trying to figure out which way you're going. Okay, the orientation's tricky. That's why they have them lights on the other side where it says JJRC. The other side they have them flashing lights. Yeah, that's facing you. Right. Okay. right. Um, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you're flying it, that's that's the back. Okay. So you know that that's where the back is, and they flash while you're flying, so you can't lose track of it. I forget. Is that headless? It has it on there, but I didn't use. You can you'll figure it out with the flashing lights. Okay. You'll be able to figure it out. Yeah. You, but it has it on there if you want to use it. Don't yeah. worry. You and I are old school. We could fly these uh, uh, whatever no 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 feature drones. Oh, I I'll tell you what. You know that one I did a few weeks ago. That National Geographic thing. Oh yeah, yeah. That National Geographic. That just screwed me up to to no end trying to fly that because it had headless mode only. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I'd be confused as all get out when I first started flying. Like, what's going on here? You know? Have you ever had a toy car where the you 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 had the headless button on by accident, but you didn't know it? You, you thought something was wrong with the drone? And yeah, you- I did that in the one review I did the other day. I had it. I had that turned on by mistake. I hit it by mistake, and I didn't know what was happening. Because yeah, you think you're going to have a flyby, you think the drone's not responding to you, and then you finally figure out, ah, stupid things in headless mode. Right. Once you get, once you don't use the headless mode ever, and then that gets dropped on you, and you can't turn it off, it's very confusing. You know, it, it gets to be very confusing. It's a great feature, like for the Phantom, if you want to take it way, way out, and you can't see it no more, which you're not supposed to do, but people right. do it, just to have it in that headless mode where you can pull the stick back and it's going to come back to you. That's a great feature to have. Yeah. Well, even like I said earlier in the show, a lot of people would just hit the return to home. Right. But if you just wanted to pull it back and it come back to you, you know, that's a good feature to have. And I do that with uh, some, some toy drones. Like remember the toy drones used to have that. They wasn't return to home, but it's one key return. Yeah. They all still have it. And they know I never had any luck with this one key return. Because so, they, it means go backwards. That's what it means. Yeah, but I'd rather I'd rather put in headless mode and, like you said, just pull the stick back towards you rather than do that one key. Thing. Right. The one key return just means backwards. Because if the quadcopter is facing the opposite way and you hit one key return, it's going to keep going the opposite way. It's not coming back to you. It's only coming back to you if the head's facing forward. That's the only way it's coming back to you. I demonstrate that all the time. Right. So, right. That, One key return means go backwards. It's that's not, all that means. It's not a favorite feature of mine. No, it doesn't work. That's why. <laughs> it's one that's, I'm like you, and I, I hate, I, anymore, I hate a phone flyer. Oh, I'll tell you what, these Wi Fi things is dry. Ugh. Wi Fi and phone flyers. I don't, oh, <laughs> I can't deal with those, man. I just, it must be just me. I see people out there flying them things. They can get the hang of it. I think actually Dave flew his pretty decently. He's pretty good at flying it with that phone. I just can't get the knack of it, man. I just can't. 
Well, I think he even got the controller for his tell. Who? That Dave. Yeah, he did, but but he didn't at one time. Right. And then like uh, like JD Quad, he'll always when he goes out there to do his videos, he'll always fly it with the controller and fly it with the phone. He doesn't seem to have a problem with it either. I just can't get the hang of it. Right. I, again, probably it's a toy thing. I remember when I first got my Spark, even though I got the patrol with it, I, I eventually like did the rebind of the, the fly with the phone. And of course, that thing flew so good, I actually could fly it with the phone or whatever. But, you know, but that was... I'm the only time I ever flew a... A, a really good drone with a phone. Usually, I'm flying some, you know, right. cheap, right? Some piece of junk, uh, right? Yeah. That's uh, like I said when I had that when I got that Spark. I flew it one time with the phone and never flew it again until I got that controller. Right. Just set it in the box. You know, here, sit there. And and the problem with you know, like you have a phone flyer and it's not GPS. You know, but by the time you figure out what you're doing with the phone, it's already like gone or crashed or whatever. But at least. Right. GPS one, but when you when you can't figure out, at least it's just sitting there waiting for you to do something. Right, exactly. Well, I did find out with those phone flyers that 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 gyro, you know, yeah. control where you would tilt the phone this way and that way, that actually does work better than trying to work your finger on the yeah. virtual stick. At first, I said that it, it wasn't better, but it actually is better. Yeah, it probably is a little. Herb Flying High said he crashed with the phone. Oh, yeah, John. Scooby mentioned the Alfie. Did you have the Alfie when it first? No, I never had to have a John. I think John's flew away, I think. I think it flew into some, over some fence or something like that. I know he had some kind of fly away over there. I had the original Alfie, and I, like you, I gave it away to a friend of mine. Yeah. Well, I wind up giving all of these quadcopters away, except the, you know, the TJI stuff and all my real premium stuff all the other ones i always get you actually enjoy flying huh the ones you actually enjoy flying yeah the ones i actually well it's not just i enjoy the the toys but i can't keep all this crap right right you right. know I, like say something like that like okay say that one back there that no not that that one okay yeah. so i flew it the one time to do the review but i might sit that on some shelf it could sit there for five years before i ever flew right. it again so the battery will be no good. So I'm not going to yeah. just let somebody else have it get some use out of it. Exactly. Maybe when, when I've uh, reviewed it and got my fun out of it, it could be maybe heading out to uh, Marcus's place for right. a review. Right. I mean, it's not like I'm going to sit there and fly that thing every day. You know what I mean? Right. I'm going to fly right. it one or two times, and then I'm never going to mess with it again. In fact, I even though you sent me this one first by your by our conversation, I think this one bypassed, and this one's going to be the one I concentrate on first. Oh, that thing flies nice there. Yeah, I, I said, now that you told me about it, I can't wait to get this thing out. It's yeah. fully manual? No, it, it has a altitude. It has altitude hold on it. Okay. I don't, I mean, you know, I could it's deal. It's got three rates, um, you know, the typical stuff like that. You know? Right, right. But it flies nice, man. It flies real nice. Right. Good, good. I'll fly it around the house here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'll fly around the house, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I I don't I got a real little backyard here. Oh, I know what I couldn't I couldn't get the flips to work when oh. I did the video. Guess what? I don't I'm out of flipper anyways. Yeah, I don't I only make I only do flips when I make videos. When I yeah. make videos for YouTube. Other than that, I never hit the flip button. If I'm out by myself flying, I never flip do the flips. Somebody said to me one time that a certain drone had flips, you know, I said, I don't know because if I ever if I ever did it was when the the first time I flew it and then you know never again. Right, I don't. You know, even the Bebop Two has flips. You oh, can really? the Bebop Two, yeah. I saw a deal today. Somebody posted a deal today. The Bebop Two and that really good controller for it and goggles and everything for like one hundred ninety nine. Oh, that's a steal, man! That Bebop Two is great. I love that thing. Do you know you, Pollock? Uh, I forget his child's name. Drone addiction or something like that. He just got the Bebop Two. He's a Xeno man. I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, he's the channel. He's, he's gonna like the Bebop too. The Bebop too is great as long as you have the flight plan. You have to get that software. You is, know, is it? Does it cost you extra? Oh yeah, it's the same as uh, the one for the Zeno. I mean, yeah, no, not the Zeno, but the Anafi. But it's it's not ninety nine cents. It's twenty dollars. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it works great. You know, 
that software is great. You have to have that for those parrot droves. They got you by the balls on that. You have to buy it. Right. Right. Well, everybody, you're, cri you're crippling the product without it. Right. You can do so much more with it. You know, with you know the autonomous flight of the bebops is like some of the best there is out there. Really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You can fly those bebops autonomously. You can set up them flight plans. It's like Waypoint. Okay. It's their version of Waypoints. You could just set it all up in there, set the controller down, hit go, and just go do something. You don't have to watch or anything. It'll just and in the in the range, there is no range limit. The range limit is the battery limit. Hmm. There is no limits on that, on their autonomous flight. Hmm. You know, cool. so even if you lose the video signal or anything, it's just gonna keep going on its merry old way. Doesn't yeah. matter. Is Paris still uh manufacturing the Bebop 2? I don't know. Well, they have the Bebop 2 power. Okay. I think they still make that. The Bebop 2, I don't think they make. Okay, the I think that's discontinued, but the Bebop 2 power is still going. Okay, good. That's good to hear. Because they put that thermal camera on there. You can get that thermal camera for that too. Wow. So right. but I think the Anafi thermal camera is better because that Bebop 2 one looks a little it's a little clunky looking, you know, though it's kind of big mm -hmm. compared to the Anafi one, you know. But the Bebop 2 has a lot more power than the Anafi too. The motors are a lot bigger and stronger, you know, than the Anafi's motors. So uh, Billy Kyle told us he was thinking about getting the uh, Anafi thermal for his uh, business because it was uh, a lot less than the DJI. Um, right. It. It's only, it's less than 2000. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it's only $1,800, I think. Hmm. Be about to $250. $250 is old. Yeah, I think I paid two ninety nine or three ninety nine for my Bebop too, but that's I got one with the headset and all that crap. But I've never used the headset. That's a great deal. Speaking of great deals, what did you think of uh, about a week ago? Um, DJI reduced the price of the Mavic Air, and then um, who was it? Target put it on sale for five hundred and forty nine dollars. Right. I saw that. Man, I feel sick to my stomach. I paid a thousand bucks for that thing. Wow. I mean that's a heck of a discount to right. build the build the drone of you and then respect late that uh, maybe the the Mavic uh, Air you know maybe this model's near the end that the retailers are discounting it that much. It has to be. When does DJI ever do a discount like that? They only discount the six seventy nine, but the the real key is when you see the big box retailers. Right. Really. What were they? What were they down to at Target? What was it? Five forty nine. That's cheap, and that's the Fly More pack. Well, I, I I can't say that. I think it was the Fly More Pack. It was the the one with the c controller and the extra batteries and all that crap. Wow. Yeah, okay. I paid a thousand bucks for that Fly More Pack at nine ninety nine. So that's a, that's a heck of a buy. Hell yeah, it is. Huh. So that was telling Bill that that other thing was going to drop. So they wanted to clear them out. Yeah, I mean that. T t yeah, Target. Target. We are not going to drop. The Target knows it's going to drop. Yeah, they're not going to make more. They're not going to manufacture more if they're discounting them that, that much. Right. So that's out of production. I'm telling you right now, that Mavic Air is out of production. There's no way they're still making that and then discounting it down to 500 bucks. No way. Right. And you know, last week's show, Marcus checked. You you cannot buy Spark from DJI anymore, not on the new or refurbished store. There were no Sparks available for sale from DJI as of last Monday. No. Well... So they're, they've got rid of all the Sparks, and now they're getting rid of all the Mavic Air, so they're going to put out something else. Something's coming. Yeah, but. no doubt. It's well, going to be that Spark, too, probably. I mean, that's what everybody's saying, but, you know, I don't follow the rumors. The only rumors I ever hear is from Bill. Right. Other than that, I don't I don't chase that stuff around. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, you know, outside of passing interest doesn't make any difference to me one way. I got more drones here I can fly now. If a Spark 2 comes, great. If it doesn't come, I still got a bunch of stuff to fly. Right. Well, they're going to have to, you know, they're going to put something else out because they want to keep the cash flow coming. And remember, when they put Spark 2 out, there was nothing else in, in the price category to compete with, like under 500. They were the only 
ball player that had like a good camera and you know good gimbal and so on but now they've got these phoebe's we talked about they got the um you know the Sino, they got the anafi discount yeah, they're even coming in at below that price point mm -hmm. See, they're below that spark price point yeah yeah so well, i don't think dji is going to come down into that three hundred dollar range i don't see that happening no, no but but again they, they've got a lot of competition now at, at that you know at, at the lower end of the market they got no competition at the higher end but right a competition at the lower end when the seven spark came out they had no competition at that end. at that end right they, right yeah, that's why they cleaned up with that thing they made a boatload of money on that spark right because all the other drones you could buy like hops and <laughs> or none of them had stabilized video right i didn't know i never got one of those 501s or whatever they were five and twos whatever it is yeah, it doesn't if he had bugs too was a clone of it i mean they were all were good little flying drones but they had unstable video right the video was crap I, yeah. I i made a video i made a video with the bugs too and i and i named the video i never posted it yet it's like a year and a half old because i gave the bugs to to uh wayne cyphers i shipped that off to him last year but i had made a video with the bugs too and the title of it was Bugs 2 flight, uh, Bugs 2 video flight. If this is 1080p, I'm Abe Lincoln. <laughs> that's what I named the video. Right, right. But that's 1080p technically, but it's that shitty 1080p. Right, right. Know, with the bit rate of 20. Right. You know, like a 20-bit rate, you know. And, 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 this, and a bad frame rate too, where right. it's, like it's, it's kind of like a old science fiction movie from the 50s or something like that. Yeah, it's even worse than that. Even yeah. 1931 King Kong was better. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and what, the problem is the, the, the all these 1080p's were two megapixels. Well, two right. megapixels, that, that was the megapixels on a cell phone from like 2005 or whatever. They're still using the same kind of camera quality from, from you know, said 15 years ago. Right. Well, my, uh, my iPhone 1, I have, you know, all the iPhones, right? right. I still have them. All of them, even back to the first one. Wow. Well, wow. Well, that camera on the iPhone one is better than the Bugs Two camera. Right, right. It's better. I said that all the time too. My first yeah. iPhone had a better camera than all these quads or toy quads around a couple of years ago. Right. And and it and it wasn't that good. The first the first good iPhone camera was the four. The four right. really yeah, had the first, that camera. was the first good camera. Yeah, yeah. The, the, when you got the four, you were thinking, Oh man, I'm in heaven. This thing, right. you know, I could do anything with this four. Uh because the, the one before the 3s i mean it was just okay at best right you know it was and the three the three g that's what it was was the three g they okay. had the three and then the three g okay, okay on the phones because i have them okay mm -hmm. but there was just a little tiny upgrade of the camera i mean a very minute upgrade but okay. then once the four came out that changed everything oh yeah the the the, the, I mean, that's when they changed the style of the phone too. Remember with the the back and all that. In the glass back, yeah. Flat. That was the flat one. You know, the first one that was right. flat. Right. The other ones had that curved, you know, that beveled back on them and everything. Because the first one, the iPhone one, the back is half aluminum and half plastic. So the antenna could get through. Yeah. Right. Hey, uh, uh, sorry, folks. We turned into uh, uh, iPhone Nation here. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, we've gone for over two hours here, so we're going to um, come to an end of the show here. Um, Brian, do you have any closing thoughts or anything you want to say before we uh, bid adieu to this this great audience we've had tonight? They've been very active. I just want to thank everybody for coming in and listening to me babble. <laughs> I can I can babble now. I'll, I'll do some babbling. <laughs> well, we, we babbled for over two yeah. hours, so... Uh, for Marcus and myself, I want to probably already spent his retirement money. It's gone now. When he gets back to Oregon, he's going back to work next week. Yeah. <laughs> right. If he goes selling his tires off his Corvette. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instead of a Corvette, he'll be driving um, a uh, Hugo. Corvair, Corvair or something. Yeah. A Hugo. <laughs> Hugo. Hugo. <laughs> you have to be a certain age to know what a Hugo is, right? Yeah, I had one. Oh, really? I bought a brand new one in 1987. Wow. I and kept that, it for two years and traded it in on a truck. And that yeah, was. I never had a problem with it. That was from Yugoslavia, right? 
Yeah, I, I paid uh, thirty five hundred dollars for a brand new in nineteen eighty seven. Oh, wow, that that is good. Yeah. But anyhow, I want to thank Brian from from both Marcus and I for being on with us tonight and 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 catching us up on what's going on with the eighty three. And I think we'll be flying out a lot here this summer that we probably get you back on again. Maybe you could do an update on when once you've really had a lot of flights with it and um you know um i know you've got some some good stuff coming up on the channel so again we want to have you back soon um one of our favorite guests so um on that note i'm gonna say good night to everybody that stayed with us uh, major hazard still with us herb still with us john Coopy, jet martin Ray Millwood, we have a lot of people stuck with us for this whole show. So they're going to win. They're going to win um, something. Yeah, right. They're going to win something. Uh, they're going to win. Yeah, win, win, win the ass with a frozen boot. Go, go, go buy a lottery ticket. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I'll put the whammy on it that you win, you know. Um, so, um, again, good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next week for some programming notes. Watch Build a Drone Reviewer tomorrow night at he moved to a new time at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's going to be a surprise guest on him with him tomorrow night. Uh, Wednesday night, tune in 8.30 Eastern Standard Time p.m. for Drone Therapy, with hosted by Bill Thomas. Um, Nemo will be on, I'm sure. I'll be on. Uh, hopefully, John Coopy will be back on this week. So um, stay tuned for that one. And um, I think that's all I got. John, uh, uh, you want got anything you want to promote on the way out the door, Brian? Uh, anything? No. No. No, no promotions. T T TDR Facebook group, right? Yeah. T uh, yeah. TDR Drones Facebook group. I've heard it's the best uh, drone uh, group on. Uh, it on is. It's Facebook. the best. It's the best without a doubt, Ron. Thanks for the promo. There you go. All right. <laughs> Good night, everyone. See you later.